Spoilers. Check. Mature language. Check. Should listeners be advised? Check. This is where your ice cream comes from. The creamy poop of a mystic unicorn. Totally clean, totally cool, and soft serve straight from a sphincter. Mmm, they're good at pooping. But you know who sucks at pooping? You do. That's because when you sit on the porcelain throne, this muscle gets a kink in the hose and stops the Ben and Jerry's from sliding out smoothly. Is that a problem? I don't know, are hemorrhoids a problem? Because sitting at this angle can cause hemorrhoids, bloating, constipation, and a buttload of other crap. But what happens when you go from a sit to a squat? Voila, this muscle relaxes and that kink goes away faster than Pegasus laying sweet sherbet dookie. Now your colon's open and ready for battle. Hey, have you guys seen this thing called the Squatty Potty? Yes, yes, I'm familiar. Is that with the one where the you put your feet on the step? Yeah. What do you think about the Squatty Potty? I have not seen the Squatty Potty. You it, have to describe it then. It's basically like a, it's like a, an elevate, it's like a little stool with two kind of like wide foot pedestals. And you're supposed to set it in front of your toilet, and when you're taking ein Schitten, you're supposed to kind of put your feet up so that instead it, of sitting, you're it's like a squat. Well, no, what it so does, it's like it you're shitting in your nature, colon, so it's supposed to be like easier to go. Mm-hmm. I have heard of that actually. It's called the Squatty Potty. They told me to get that after my back surgery. I didn't. Just buy a, a five-gallon bucket. You don't no, I, th- I think that the elevation has to be precise. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Otherwise, you could just throw some fucking phone books down and just put your... <laughs> I would, there. dude. I would. My understanding... I'm not sure how precise it has to be. I think that's just a, a safety measure. But my understanding is that in Asian countries where they squat, they don't have a problem with things like hemorrhoids. And they have an easier time with regularity. And it's because the human body is designed to squat to take a shit. And we've... All of our muscles have gotten weak from sitting on commodes all these years. And so that's why in the Western, one of the reasons why in the Western world we've developed hemorrhoids and, and all sorts of issues with constipation. Anal so the squatty fissures. potty basically tries to turn, what was that last word? Anal, Anal fissures. fissures. There you go. Uh, I thought you were going to make another Stephen King reference and you talk about the ass weasels from the uh, Dreamcatcher. Um, <laughs> what? Those were awesome. I'm not. The little shit weasels came out of the guy's butt when he was farting. They're like, Jason Lee's like, what'd you do? Eat a woodchuck turd? I say that to my wife all the time when she farts. <laughs> so anyhow, the squatty potty turns a Western toilet into a, a Asian toilet, basically, by, by as far as the body mechanics go. And they got some hey. pretty cool videos for it, like commercials. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to hear about the videos. Okay. No, 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 no. They're, they're, they're very, like, tongue-in-cheek. Kind of like... Remember oh, the- gross! I don't want to hear... <laughs> tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> So our quite enough sayers. I don't know what that is. Well, I, I started. Why do you keep renaming saying, all this fucking shit all the I'm fucking time? I'm just renaming time. shit all the time. Yeah, uh, that's people who comment it. Oh, okay. Okay. plus it's based off the old Marvel. Marvel actually used to have like different rankings as a Marvel fan. You know what you true believers and all these other ones. So I kind of wanted to incorporate that to have a little bit of fun with it. Since we already stratify, you know, this is the one show that I continue to say, okay, where well, these are the people who did retweets and these are the people who did likes and this kind of shit. So and these are the people who did both. So yeah, so this well, no, no, quite enough sayers are people who love comment. No, I know, I mean. Okay. okay. Um, quite enough sayers. Transform and roll out says try the Roll Spine podcast slash Marvel Superheroes podcast. I don't know who was he talking to. I think Cybertronian he was Beast, talking to Cybertronian was, Beast was asking before. around or something. Yeah, of course. Siskoid on episode 55, 20th Century Fox's X Men Apocalypse. Pretty detailed account of the film, and I still don't know what the plot is, which I think it probably your best condemnation of it. I didn't care to see this thing, especially given that I always thought Apocalypse was a total pan was total pants. Wait, this is a Siskoid? This has got to be a Martin Gray, man. Pants? What? Only Martin Gray talks like that. This movie was pants. No, I think this is a Siskoid comment. Well, he got it was from a Martin Gray. Pants. I probably only have Mr. Sinister. I only pro- I probably only hate Mr. Sinister more. But the show is fun. Maybe it's worth making a movie after all, just so I could get these couple hours of rolled spine. Maybe. I like Mr. Sinister. He's like one of my favorite X Men villains. So I think he's one of the coolest looking villains. Yeah, the coolest one. I always liked Apocalypse myself. That we're we're well aware. We're we did well a whole podcast on like Apocalypse. I like Mr. Sinister. I'd be happy to see him in like the Gambit movie. Hopefully, not gonna happen. Uh, Siskoid on episode 56 Satana the devil's, da- devil's daughter you're late on podcast Frank look what I just listened to yeah because remember he was going back and yeah well, well he, he after has Summer like, of George or whatever he yeah he has like po- no 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 well, he's he's on Summer of George now Uh, he has like podcasting seasons where this is the season where I make podcasts this is the season where I listen to podcasts and we were out of season for a while there so he's just now catching up on like months worth of our shows which really shouldn't be that hard because we haven't gotten a lot of Marvel superheroes out in recent expect months expect more comments for the episodes leading to present day oh 
Oh, Satana, so strange and sexy. Funny, hot, or not plugged, by the way. Didn't I even say Satana hot or not, guys, in one episode, or was that something I'm else? not sure. It's been a while, uh, but we plugged this podcast. In the original. Available on the Fire and Water Podcasting Network. <laughs> In 2011, the irredeemable Shag and Aqua Rob Kelly teamed up to create the Fire and Water Podcast. In 2016, they teamed up with Ryan Daly, the Franklins, and Siskoid to form the Fire and Water Podcast Network. A network built on teaming up needs a show about team-ups. Marvel team-up. Yes. The brave and the bold. You know it. Marvel two-in-one. It's clobbering time. DC Comics presents, of course, Super Villain Team Up. Good idea. Young Blood X Force. Mmm, technically. FW Team Up coming this summer only from the Fire and Water Podcast Network. Oh, the Iron Water Podcast Network. Uh, in the original edition, Marvel Universe Book of the Dead. Uh, I never researched it, so I didn't realize she was created for the black and white magazines, but it makes perfect sense. I've got to track those down. As always, love the coverage of Marvel's heroines, or anti-heroines, as the case may be. Keep it up. I just really like that she's related to Son of Satan, but was developed completely independently, so I, I just think that's cool. I like that. Equality. Dar- Darcy on episode... In Satanism. Darcy on episode number 57, The Double Life of Private Steve Rogers. For... What is FWI... FW again? For what I... What I wish? Or, 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 Not I, always, I would screw that one up. Disney's ancestors came from France, specifically that war. The city, Sir Mayor. We need some Gal Gadot, Godot action on that. We need to French fry that somehow, but we're not. We got to talk to Siskoid and figure out how to the do that. The name began as Dixigny from Isigny. Hope that helps. Darcy's smarter than me, so. Yeah, uh, we've acknowledged that Darcy's smarter than all of us. Uh, Siskoid on episode 57, The Double Life of Private Steve Rogers. So, did the Hydra Cap thing get resolved yet? Uh, as of your comment writing, no, but as of now, yes? Not yet. No, there's still oh, Secret Empire not... still a going thing that we want nothing to do with. If so, I uh, how? I haven't you seen would. anything about it. As for Cap, uh, being gay or not, Frank makes a good argument, but it's perhaps needlessly reductive in terms of gender slash sexual identity. What's wrong with a man entertaining strong bromances and having tepid chemistry with women? That's what that's what Fr- Fix It and I's point was in that podcast. That's but... a, that's a little too close to home, personally, but... Uh... Right, because I think I actually said that where I was like, <laughs> wait, isn't him being awkward around girls just mean that he definitely is straight? Because a lot of straight dudes who were dweeby nerds would be bad around my, my main issue is that you know I'm all for inclusion I got no problem with Cap being gay much rather him be gay than be a fucking Nazi which is why I want nothing to do with Nick Spencer's books I won't read the Falcon run that you're telling me I'm enjoying the books quite a bit I wish yeah. he was a gay Nazi who ate pudding with cowboys <laughs> Frank made a funny Jason Martinez on episode number 59 San Diego Comic Con 2016 411 another good episode thank you Jason Ange on episode number 59 SDCC 2016 411 you mean the men are from Mars and Girls from Krypton isn't happening? Yeah, the, the podcast that I keep talking about doing with Ange that probably will never occur. If my schedule... I actually, just for the record, I bought Supergirl Season 1 when it first came out in anticipation of finally getting something together with Ange and none of us, neither one of us will actually do anything to motivate the other to actually get it done so we just keep talking about it but yeah, I don't, I still I don't think owe, it'll happen. I still owe Ange a podcast from a bet from like a year ago. Oh Supergirl. yes, on Supergirl, yes. Um, I just... Blah, 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 and I missed... What, okay, you mean the men, men are from Mars, girls are from Krypton isn't happening if my schedule was more predictable such that we could set up a recording time I'd be so in still I hope that we do get to record something together at some point I was more impressed this with was the before one- the Tiger episode was recorded that we did together as I recall gotcha I was more impressed with the Wonder Woman trailer than you guys because it seemed more like a superhero movie and less like Darkness Bloodfest the prior DC adventure the JLA one seemed overly light a clear response to the complaints of the dark of the Darkness Brood Fest amazingly you uh, you guys like you guys amazingly like you guys Ezra Miller was a high point and I was going expecting to hate this performance because I like the Flash show so much. Flash but So this was actually the this is how old our comments are. This was the first teaser trailer from Justice League. The one that was never actually officially considered oh. a trailer. By the way, Paquita, when I, she had never seen the Justice League trailer the actual official trailer before we watched Wonder Woman and her, her main comment was that Aquaman's hot. She just really thinks that Jason Momoa is hot. She doesn't give a shit about the rest of that movie. Our next comment comes from Unearthly Visions on episode number 59 SDCC 2016 which, which I think is like two or three identities 
ago. Grant Richter has now got like a Swamp Thing podcast that I need to listen to. Give it a shot. Yeah, Grant's my guy. Uh, so, but yeah. Uh, okay, now I have to hear about Frank Smashing Pumpkin Supervillain Team Up. Sorry, this is way off topic. Just going to listen to your Force Awakens World Spine special. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan by any means, but I have to agree with Mac about the Han Solo death scene. I actually didn't see it coming because I'm so cynical about the movie plots by now, and I really expected them to half-ass this scene. Uh, it would have been so easy for them to compress Darth Vader's three-movie moral journey from the original trilogy into a single movie with Emo Ren, just to have him pause for just long enough to have uh, Rey save Han, to have him pause just long enough to have Rey... Uh, I just read that line again. Or to have Emo pull a melodramatic, I can't, and hurl his lightsaber away over some over-trope nonsense. I'm glad they pulled it off the way they did. Well, and they didn't just like waste him like they did Darth Maul. Where it's like, oh, this is going to be a cool badass, yeah, and then which, fucking chop him in half in I the first we fucking said that. movie. We, we were worried he would not be there for the next one. Uh, our next comment comes from Siskoid on episode number sixty, Marvel SHP Summer Special two thousand sixteen. I really enjoy these crazy comment uh, outtake montages. It's just really hard to find something to say about the disparate, dis- disparate comments, comments in the comments. In the comments. Yeah, uh, I don't even really remember what the heck Daly and I might have said to ruffle the feathers on social media. I do is when they pissed off Dan Jurgens yeah, over their was, commentary on. Batman it was Superman. definitely because, exactly what that was. Yeah, that yes. was definitely because you pissed off Dan Jurgens. Um, but I do remember having a conversation when I was invited to form the network, expressing surprise that they wanted the potty mouthed Canadian shows on the same feed as their normally white bread content. I have I'm just letting his normally white bread content uh, comment breathe. Uh, I have noticed that the other guys have started dropping profanity in their shows more and more since though. And Mac, I am not an angry Quebecer. How dare you? I'm an angry Acadian. Fuck Quebec. Fuck Quebec forever. But I'll allow it because by accident of birth, I was born on that side of the border. Oh, and as usual, Shaq is completely wrong about something. That was a great Careless Whisper remix. Hashtag Hashtag. You're the Whisper, hashtag Keanu, hashtag Deadpool, hashtag Sausage Party, hashtag Sing Street, hashtag R.I.P. By the way, I just want to say, uh, I'm in no way trying to diminish the passing of Prince. I have bought two of the Prince tribute magazines that came out, but I was looking everywhere for a George Michael tribute magazine, and I could not find that anywhere. It was all like fucking 30th anniversary Dirty Dancing shit, so just very frustrated that I do not have my commemorative of George Michael magazine. And I know that's some old world thinking at this point, but I've literally seen Prince's tribute come back a year later. They like redistributed that one again on the one year anniversary. Still no George Michael. What is this magazine that you speak of? Hey, let's uh, to break the conversation for a second. Uh, Neil Blomkamp's Alien 5 canceled. Woo! Is, really? No, that oh was, yeah, that wasn't when Why? we were we were sitting at the. They were talking about that at the panel at when the we, panel. we were at Comic Palooza. Yeah. yeah. My question is, what's going on with Alien Five? And, and Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver's was like, come back. Yeah, and well, she's like, this is gonna happen after Prometheus. Yeah, well, yeah, that was the, that was the laugh line number one. Is like, this is totally gonna happen just as soon as we finish Avatar. The four movies that are gonna take until like twenty twenty five be done, and she's gonna be fucking eighty years old by the time that shit's over with, and then she's gonna come back and do another action. So wait, but all the other fans Prometheus in the audience bought it because they're like. Woo! Yeah, I never was very. I was. I was not born on board with that. Okay. I, I, I love aliens. I, I love that cast. But uh, it's like Bill Paxton made that crack. I don't care because I'm motherfucking dead. You know. It's like yeah, yeah. no shit. You can't oh, remake. Now he is. And now he really is. That's fucked up, right? R.I.P. Um. But anyway, uh, yeah. The, the the cast from Aliens is gone, so you can't make that movie over again. They've told Ripley's story. They've already made one Alien movie too many. They should never have made Alien Resurrection. That movie's a fucking dog turd. I hate that fucking movie. Uh, <gasps> Alien Three ends the franchise. <gasps> And then you need to start over again. So no, no more Ripley. Ripley needs to be gone. No fucking clones. No, 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 no. shit. Reboot. No. Yeah. No. Wait, 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 wait. No. How many enough, pre- enough fucking reboots. I'm tired of how many shit. Avatar reboots. They're supposed to be. I, I, fuck you, I know, but that, that what he's referring to is Ripley. Ripley Scott basically came out and said, "Yeah, that was never really going to be a thing, and we're doing my thing. Reboot. And we're not going to do that thing. Reboot. So it's not going to happen. I liked Resurrection. Reboot. I'm, go- I'm going on, dude. Ron Perlman with that piece of shit gun that he made, and the guy even said, "Put that piece of shit down." Yeah. No. Hate that fucking movie. Wow. I, 
I actually just so I, had, I had a comic, everything. Well, I had a comic palooza. I watched all the Alien movies again. Well, not the fucking AVP. I don't. I don't count that shit. <laughs> uh, I didn't watch Prometheus either because I still don't count that shit. AVP is a guilty pleasure. Yes. If you watch it enough yes. times, it's fun. But the Maybe. second one, which like all the fans are like, that's the way it should have been. They filmed it so dark mm-hmm. that True. it doesn't matter what TV. T- I've tried Blu-ray <laughs> yeah. HD. It, you can't tell what's fucking happening. God help! But your wife walks by and turns out the light in the living room. <laughs> you're like, I can't see anything now. <laughs> Yeah, no, I never actually saw the second one. I saw the first one in the movie theater, I think, with these two guys. Yeah. And uh, I watched I booed it. when yeah. it was over. I <laughs> no stood kidding. up and I booed. Good call. <laughs> I was like, uh, how do you fuck this movie right, up? Right, right. It's just aliens fighting Versus predators. predators. How do you fuck this up? <laughs> Who would have thought a movie combining Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees would have been a higher creative threshold than that movie could cross, you yeah. know? But yeah, no, I, I watched it on cable, uh, like, I think last year or so, but not not for the run-up for Comic Clues, but a little bit before that. And I just didn't appreciate how lousy that movie was it's just so boring if, if nothing else and, and if i'm going to watch a movie that just blatantly rips off aliens and cube that's what resident evil's for so wait how did we get off of squatty potty the last how did resident we get on to squatty potty so bad yes what is which one the last resident evil movie? it was pretty i was so bad. pumped yeah. to just put it away and dude you were pumped too so yeah the, it, was, it was very disappointing dude, it's definitely one of the worst the ones trailers yeah trailers playing guns and roses mm. i mean dude how cool was that and it was just like fuck yeah and then yeah that nothing got resolved i halfway think that's where they were going for they were trying to use the nostalgia to help carry over i'm wondering if maybe that stunt woman getting shredded the way that she did maybe it just like wiped everybody out on that set because the movie was like very low energy very muted it just yeah. didn't it felt like they were all going through the motions yeah it was the last movie was what everybody says the resident evil franchise was you know it's like yeah. i think those movies they are underrated. who we thought they were is what all the, the last one saying. was yeah and it doesn't uh, yeah Wait, exactly. Frank, are they the still comp- making under are they still making uh those uh underworld movies the last underworld and it's funny because is the I, last one, by the way? I was like, well, they need to reboot or they need to add monsters. I'm like, they've gone too far with it. And and the, like two days later on Facebook, it popped up my review of the last one. And I said the exact same thing. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they either need to freaking change some shit up or, or kill it. I mean, the fire, day, everything's cool about it. But it's like you're watching the same movie over and over again. Because mm. yeah. it's that one girl in the black leather fighting yeah. werewolves. Monsters. Monsters. Except for the one that took place in the past where there was a different girl in black leather killing Which monsters. Like the first two were fantastic. Fantastic. The, the third one was pretty cool. They kicked it back. That's the Rona Matro one, right? Yeah. Dude, she's hotter than hell. So. I, I never made it past the first one. I, I just, Me neither. The, the, I all the, all the blue filter sure. stuff. I've never been a Lynn Wiseman fan. And then I also ended up going to the whole campus. Like, you're either a Resident Evil guy or an Underworld guy. So I was a Resident Evil guy. Oh, really? See, God damn, like those sad ass camps. <laughs> oh, shit. Man, those are shit camp back camps. The Resident Evil uh, cartoons are freaking awesome. I, I, I watched the first one and I couldn't stand it. And it made me mad because <laughs> I paid money for it. I bought it because I was like, like, you know what? I, I liked, I'm, I'm, again, me and Mac, we saw uh, Final Fantasy of the Spirits with them. Was I that saw the name? With you. We, was you with, yeah. no, 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 he wasn't that with us. Was no, that was you and me, two of us. That was and us. we both came out of it going, no, man, that was a way better that. movie than we thought. Well, you because... may have gone to see the film, but yeah. he's you didn't see it with us, us though. Yeah. Yeah. And we both were like, man, that was, a, that was a deeper movie than we thought. That was a better movie than we thought. And so I was hoping that with Sony doing original Resident Evil uh, movies, it'd be like, oh, cool. And I, I hated the first one. I think I like half watched the second one streaming and didn't even really pay attention to it. So I couldn't get into it. Can I ask you something? I just need to ask this. What do you like? I like things. Like what? Hey, I mean, just give me. No, 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 no. I, no, no, no. I, I need one fucking movie. No. Nope. Okay. Uh, one uh, movie like. Sure. You want it? one movie? I, I like Network. How about that one? From the 1980s, 70s. What is it? Network. Network. He what? he said, give me one movie. What's it's like Network? okay, I'll give you one. Network's it's from the, the 70s, so it was like we were infants at the time, so it doesn't matter. It's uh, basically a movie that predicted reality television and the decline of media. You know. So yeah. He just told me to pick one. That's there's one. I just every time we mention a movie, he's like, oh, I hate that. Oh, I hate that. Oh, I hate that. And I'm just like, what about the Burbs? I like the Burbs. Okay. I, 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 hey, wait. So, like, if you came into my house and in the guest bathroom there was a squatty potty, <laughs> would you be? Oh, I'd give it a shot. Yeah, you would give it a shot, well, or I you'd give... be like, "What the hell is this?" Like, I, 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 I would shit no. on it because I assume that's what no. it was for. Now you're getting. Now you're being ridiculous. Well, here's the thing. I do try not to shit in people's bathrooms if I can help it. But sometimes but we go and we hit the tagadillas and stuff, and then I just got. I would have to take a shit here. But I try not to shit at your place because you got nice looking. Everything's kind of like kept up. Well, and, no, and, uh, I don't think, I don't nice think you... subtweet on well, how you don't think. <laughs> His place is nice. Oh, just well, no, no, no. He's got to live bathroom in that. It's not the cleanest guest bathroom. It's I've not gone that. It's, well, it's not oh, that. It's right. that. There's I got rings it, in there. It doesn't appear to get a lot of use. So your it, you've got a paper trail basically when it comes to using his bathroom more so. Where yours, I think, gets a little bit more of a rotation. So it's not necessarily my ass going to be the one that gets Dude, caught it's, if, it's if, been if, there if things go sideways. <laughs> that toilet's been there probably the 70s. Mm-hmm. So no, you're good. Wait, so are we? Are we? I would ask you. You'd be like, "What is this?" Or would you be like, "No, I would be like, can I use it?" 
I if I have to, I would ask for permission before. Oh, I, just, I would. I would just give it a try. No, if it's in the bathroom, then no, it's implied, it. just like toilet paper. I don't have to ask permission to use toilet really? paper. So I can. I'm not shitting on the squatty potty. I'm putting my feet on it, and I'm gonna have shoes on my side. So what's, what's the harm? We went to a party in high school, and a rich chick that lived way out in the boonies. Mm-hmm. The Been to that chick's they house had before, a and, and got in trouble. My friend. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, I've never had a bidet. I, I totally admit that too. Well, did you go ape shit? That, was that part of the problem? Or no? But doom. I think we just pulled our pants down and shot water up, you know? Okay. Well, that's what you do, I thought. I know. Isn't that how You've bidets work? Seen one. It was like, what is this? <laughs> Yeah, I would totally want to try a bidet. I've, I've only seen them in movies. So, so maybe some water. Oh, now if you're doing water sports, then I can see where that'd be my kind of only, you, want to my, you want to know my only experience with the bidet? Sure. Crocodile Dundee. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's it. I haven't seen that movie That's since it I came out. That's when I first became okay. aware that a bidet exists. And to this day, my entire knowledge of a bidet is that moment in Crocodile Dundee. So I have a quick question. So the bidet, when you finish on the toilet, you're supposed to get up and it goes sit on a bidet? This or is the guy to ask. He's, he's the one who's actually made contact. I, 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 I believe you do wipe. So you wipe and then rinse wipe throw it in there and then scoot over so it's right next to the toilet yeah some of them are it looks like two toilets together that's so weird i think my father would be totally game with that he's got this thing where he takes a shower after he takes a shit every time he takes a shit he takes a shower if i built my own house and money was less of an object i'd have a urinal so i'm a squatter so i just like stand and pee urinal does no i I like to sit because even if i'm just taking a piss i'm usually like wanting to read or something you got to get that microphone under control buddy yeah it it is kind of all over the place oh sorry no what it's because it looked like you were trying to hypnotize me with it (laughs) You're doing this. I'm not used to having one. He's not used to big black things slapping him in the face. (laughs) See, that's racist. Maybe I am. It it, it implies that there's... It's only if you remove the black top and say, it can only be white. I don't think a silver thing is any better. Like, he's been probed. We're going to the the, the, uh, fire from above and from from Dreamcatcher. I do have a white top, actually, yeah. Would that make it better? Don't force your racism on me. I thought you were actually asking about his penis. (laughs) And he was like, yeah, I actually do have a white top. And I was like, what? Well, it's implied. It's implied, yeah. Or it could be pink, I guess, but, you know. Uh. Keen Size Comics Giant Size Fun Podcast, a.k.a. Kyle Binning, on episode number 61, at Treasury Comics. Pair this treasury with the latest episode of At World Spine, Marvel Comics, Marvel Superhero Podcast on Thor. Oh, yeah, yeah. But th- did they do a treasury cast on, on Thor? Thor right I, don't the remember the, I don't remember the Thor one that well. Odell Abner Dracula. Uh, Dracula? What am I, from New York? What was that? <laughs> uh, on episode number 61, The Mighty Thor, I'm pro John Romita Jr., world-class storyteller. I could stand to see tighter ink work with him, though. So, and we all agree with that. Uh, our next comment comes from Ryan Daly on episode number 61, The Mighty Thor. Holy shit, I legit had to pause the new episode. I was laughing so hard at the band Odin Force. I swear to God we've done some of these comments in episode. It's possible, but we've got so much leftover stuff that hadn't been addressed. Why not? Or, I'll see or if I can we find recorded it. it and it never made it. There could be something like that, yeah. Our next comment comes from Ange. On episode number 61, The Mighty Thor, the only Thor run I have is the Simonson run. Now that that's a fantastic run that has stood the test of time. The run was mostly immersed in the Asgardian plot lines there weren't too many issues set on earth but even those issues shine frog thor was on earth and there were a couple of issues that had to take uh with a take on martial law take on martial law well, i thought that was a take on judge dread but okay uh, i've never liked john Romita jr's art recently he did superman with gene yang and the art was gruesome i laughed a ton with this episode especially loved machine saying this stuff can't be as cool as you're making it sound because there's no way any of that stuff can be <laughs> as cool. there's no way thor comics are as cool as you and uh fry were making it sound it's just not possible our next comment comes from storm chaser 2162 aka grant richter aka we're um, all monsters. I think he's going with another one related to Swamp Thing now. I'd have to go check. Uh, on ep- episode number 61, Thor, maybe uh, my buddy, the Vision, can get a little love in the disassembled episode. Or maybe his own episode? Well, we probably should do that. Yeah. Uh, maybe we be may, may be needing guests more o- often in the near future. Yeah. It's, uh, it's become obvious that at, that my attempt at a blog about the greater Marvel U is still going to end up all about the Vision. So take a look at the unearthlyvisions.blogspot.com if you're bored, which everybody should. God, imagine the money you could make with, on the nostalgia click cosplay piercings this is just I'm getting uncomfortable <laughs> uh, I was walking through Target listening to my earbuds and started laughing like crazy god damn it because I think that you told somebody that was flicking the nostalgia click. that's you Frank <laughs> now I want an Oda Force tour shirt me too holy shit the only thing creepier than the, com- the computer voice mutilating my name is Frank imitating it uh, hashtag pooped my pants <laughs> our next comment comes from I need to, I need to bring, we, we actually do need to co- do comments on the DC special the Wonder Woman episode which will probably be out before this one anyway 
and I, I'm looking forward to the return of creepy computer voice, but probably a different creepy computer voice. I like variety in my artificial intelligence that disturbs people. You know, there's a, a there's a company, there's a startup that's working on being able to take duplicate your voice. It can duplicate people's voices, mm-hmm. so not just like, but it can actually uh, duplicate you, inflection. So basically, you can sound like Obama if you wanted to. Yeah. So like they they have a, the Trump one is really good. Yeah. So you can listen to the sound clips they've generated, and they well, still, he doesn't talk like a human being. To they begin still with, so kind that's of probably sound, makes it easier. They still kind of sound a little choppy, but oh no no the it, cre- creepy. no the creepy one is this this. Uh, not, I'm, I'm opposed to this. Being, no 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 no. This is bad This is creep- no, no, this science. Creepy this is one. bad stuff. These guys have created a program that you put on like this little mask, and you they'll they'll uh, you can manipulate a celebrity's face. So this guy put on the mask and is talking, and it's like Donald Trump is talking, and he's doing the same movements with the head as he opens his mouth, and basically, and that was creepy. So you already can't believe shit on the internet because of Photoshop. Now soon you're not going to be able to believe video clips yeah. or audio clips because yeah. they can just be complete Manipulate bullshit. It. I'm going to die at about the right time because we are entering the dystopia now. No, you're you're going to die. Not nearly. They'll keep your head in a jar. Enough, you'll be yeah. fine. Yeah, because it, it's coming. It's coming quicker than you think. Okay, episode number sixty-one, the Mighty Thor. I agree with Mac. You probably make those Thor stories sound a lot more awesome than they actually were. Still makes me wonder. I really liked you looking at Thor without hanging the whole thing on the Simonson run because everyone always does that. Uh, and I totally get with what Fryhole was talking about when he referred to an automatic connection when the comic was about your heritage. For some reason, I give Alpha Flight more of a pass than they usually deserve. Was that sarcastic or not? No, I think he's being legit. He's spoken warmly of Alpha Flight in the yes, past. Yes, he has. He has. Yeah. And Alpha Flight was a more interesting book than I read for. I think I would enjoy Alpha Flight as an adult way more than I was able to as a kid looking for X-Men some more. You know, X-Men 2 do. The uh, uh, next comic. And, and I just want to point out too that uh, Wonder Woman's another character that suffers from that where it's like George Perez apparently did everything that anybody ever gives a shit about Wonder Woman. It's like, could you guys read some more shit? Read so some there's shit. more there's good, more good Thor stuff besides Simonson. <laughs> the Irredeemable Shag on episode number 62, Tiger 2 and 1 featuring Spider-Man and the Thing. I love how Tiger has become a running character in this podcast. We got more with Tiger coming, by the way. Uh, if we could get the Red Wolf episode out so we can set up the Red Wolf Tiger team up. The insight into her origins and ongoing development makes fascinating long form listening. And I don't have anything insightful or pithy to add. Just keep up the great work. Let's have more Tiger episodes. And it goes without saying, she's hot. Shag. Yes. Dan Shag. Tip Shag. Our next comment comes from Randy Caldwell on episode number 62. I think the 1983 was good for DC. Titans leading towards the Judas contract. Epic stuff from LSH. Al Williamson inking Kurt Swan. All-Star Squadron was awesome with Roy Thomas and Jerry Ordway. JLA, JLA had Conway and Chuck Patton. JL Detroit was a year away. 1983 gave us Jason Todd, Killer Croc, and Lobo. Well, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing was starting. DC was okay in 1983. After Byrne, Cockrum, and Smith on art, the Jeremy Jr. era was a letdown for me. I bought Uncanny X-Men for reading, not art. The art was kind of depressing to me, but Marvel, but still Marvel looking. The New Mutants wouldn't be awesome until Sienkiewicz arrived in 1984. Yeah, I, I misspoke. I, I said the wrong year or, or something. I didn't mean DC in 83. I like DC in 83 too. I think I was a little earlier in the decade, like 80 or 79, somewhere there's what I meant. And for some reason, I was saying 83. So that was just an error on my part. I will again say that the John Amita Jr. period on X-Men is basically my favorite period of that book. So I'm, I will definitely spend that. And I'll also point out that Ange is probably correct. John Amita Jr. is not supposed to be a DC. He's a Marvel guy and it, it disturbs me to see him doing DC stuff just like when Mark Bagley went over it's just like you're, you, this isn't where you belong this is not your home you're a Marvel guy it's just you're crossing the streams our next comment from, comes from David Galeher great episode with Tiger and Craven also nice shout out to High Fidelity and the Film and Water podcast also if you're never if you're ever keen to have me on as a guest I'd love to join you I dig the range of Marvel books are covering the burn run on West Coast Avengers was an absolute favorite of mine Soviet Super Soldier slash Winter Guards New Warriors Champions Bill Foster Rom US Agent and the Grunewald era of comics yeah I, I've been way behind on that I've got a, a number of things I want to do related to uh, Mr. Glayer, especially because he's been working on The Only Living Boy uh, and I've been uh, trying to get the time to read that too uh, it might turn up on an underguise or something in the time since we were having the discussion I also got into IDW's ROM series which I think is pretty damn cool and it reminded me that I, I liked ROM when I was growing up I didn't read it regularly it was one of those books that kind of just found its way to you on occasion I don't remember ever seeing it on the newsstand it was always somebody else had a copy and I'd read theirs but I actually bought the Winter Guard trade paper back Dark Star I think is, and the Winter Guard is what it's called that he wrote uh, at this year's Comic Palooza so I've actually physically got a copy of that book now to cover that plus there's a lot of crossover because those guys were in ROM too so you know hopefully we'll get that done and actually uh, fix it I ought to try to send you like some uh, material on that uh, Only Living Boy so maybe we could do that together I know which one he write, writes a book for Paper Cuts called The Only Living Boy I don't know a lot about it I know a bit from Paper Cuts was like sponsoring a segment on the Fire and Water podcast where they were talking about the book um, and you know so I've, I've been wanting to read that 
that. Been meaning to, and uh, we should probably read that together and do it for an, one of our episodes. Sure, why not? I got time. Just finish the. Uh, there's there's actually slide. a lot of people that are like really euphoric because they feel like Superman's finally back on track after like the entirety of the New Fifty Two. But they didn't like Superman, and you know, all the Superman stuff and stuff they I, actually I think the really Superman like. kid stuff's kind of dumb, but I don't know. I gotta finish that one too. What was the one you said you liked? Uh, the Sinestro War one was already in. Mm. The Suicide Squad that you'll hate. It's basically the movie, but Waller is Waller again. Yeah, but yeah, I'm not. It's, I'm not it's based that. on the movie yeah. so hard. All right, our next comment comes from Unearthly Visions on episode number sixty-two, Tiger Two and One, featuring Spider-Man: The Thing. Hearing about Burns Run on West Coast Avengers always makes me cringe. Beautiful art, but that is a rough read for me, especially if you're a Vision fan. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. Uh, Count Druncula on episode number sixty-two. Listening now, can't believe I heard a Nuke Lelouch reference on this show. What was that about? Oh, uh, it, it has. Well, I mean, Luke, Nuke Lelouch is from Bull Durham, oh. so I don't remember the context you, though. Wasn't me. Uh, you know, I, th- I think that was from Ange. Ange dropped that, and I was like, yeah, okay. And I, I think I had to look it up oh, on IMDb gotcha, okay. or something. I've uh, seen Bull Durham, but it's been a long time. Our next comment comes from Scott Rowland. I can't read it. Spat on Inglehart's work, ruined Vision and Scarlet Witch, made the other Avengers a holes. A lot of people had trouble with the John Byrne run. A lot of people yeah. like that run, feel strongly about it. A lot of strong opinions with both directions on that right. run. The next comment comes from Kyle Benning on episode number sixty-two. He was the death stroke. He was death stroke for death stroke with Craven's search for PEDs. He always struck me as more of a Bane before Bane. Byrne can ink himself and look awesome. Just refer to the Doom Patrol story in Secret Origins Annual Number One. Nah, I didn't really like that his inking on that. I, I'm just I'm not a fan of Byrne inking himself. I, he he just again it's just like Jim Lee. These they they they're just a little too flat. They're just never quite as good when they ink in themselves when the good other inkers ink them. Now, obviously, if you got a shit inker, that's a world difference. And what about Cra- Craven being Bane instead of Craven being Duster? I don't think about anybody being Bane because Bane's such a third generation wannabe knockoff of a bunch of other characters. I, I don't make any kind of association there. Bane is Bane. I, I, half the time I forget that guy even exists. Our next comment comes from Mike McLarty. That is heavy inking over Burn. Yes, yes, that's it was. That's a comment. Okay, our next comment comes from what is that? Uh, is that Cho? Cho? Chloe. Oh, Chloe. My bad. On episode number 62, Tiger 2 in 1 featuring Spider-Man the Thing. Ha ha, husband has a huge crush on her, and I like to screw with him and call her Cheetah. I'm sure if he likes her, that really pisses him off. Our next comment comes from Oscar Blue Devil. Just got me mint Marvel Le- Legends Craven from a flea market. Next, Tigra. <laughs> and uh, do I thank Frank for this Marvel Chillers featuring Tiger mini collection I'm now gathering? Or curse him? And uh, Ange has continued to expand his Tiger horizons. Yeah, I, at this point, I'm like, you can't put that shit on me. Because obviously he's reliving his childhood of busty cheetah drawn by John Byrne in the 1970s. I was liking the cat. I wasn't really that into the tiger. He's, he's getting cat stuff too and he shouts at whenever he buys something. He, he does a little bit of shout out but he, he's really very particular about Tigra and I, I like the cat and then I like Patsy Walker. My The reason why we haven't had a bunch of Patsy Walker episodes is because I'm so into that character that I'm really wanting to shape that material. It'll probably be our episode 75 will be a Patsy Walker special. So... You are about to see the first public exhibition of an entirely new form of entertainment. You are about to see. You are about to see. Because you demanded it. It's Treasury Cast, a podcast devoted to the greatest comics format of all time, the Treasury Edition. DC, Marvel, Archie, IDW, and more, bigger than life. It's the Treasury Cast, part of the Fire and Water Podcast Network. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, and on fireandwaterpodcast.com. Well, no. So the theater we went to go see it at, uh, the one thing that me and Fryho discussed was, so they showed the Star Wars trailer. Mm-hmm. Same with and, mine. And, and we went, and we went to a theater a, a little bit in the hood, a little hoodish. Yeah. And so the Mario. Star Wars, still it's safe. Star, yeah, still safe. Relati- relative. Relatively. But so they showed the Star, the Star Wars trailer. Relative to like Fallujah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they show the Star Wars trailer. It ends. Crowd is quiet. Then fucking Thor Ragnarok comes on, and it, in a trailer that we've probably what, over half a dozen times, times. Yeah, a thousand times. And so, as soon as the trailer was over, I'm waiting, and people are clapping and hollering. And I'm like, "Oh my god, yeah, this movie's gonna be going fucking! Dude, this movie's gonna be in fucking insane!" I, I was irritated because fuckers decided that they were gonna come to their seats and walk past me during the Ragnarok trailer, really? right around the time of the Gila yeah. breasting bitch face turn. Yeah. And I was like, "Get the fuck out of my way! I'm in this theater." 
They're showing the Ragnarok trailer, and you're going to have to fucking come by me right the fuck now, you stupid cunt. Get the fuck down. I just, I, re- I, lo- I looked over at Fra- Fraho and I said, this movie's going to be huge, dude. Like, these people are going nuts over it. And they were clapping. Yeah. Well, especially because um, they also did the Spider Man Homecoming trailer, and I was just sort of like, no, we didn't get that one. Eh. Uh, yeah. I got a yeah, big, we, big we meh from that Maybe, trailer. Yeah. Big meh. And showing too damn much. Because yeah. I, I, was, I was fine with them showing Spidey on the fucking ferry, and they hadn't shown how that particular problem was going to get resolved. And now the new trailer was like, oh, oh, that's how they fix it. Great. Yeah. Thanks for fucking spoiling that, dumbasses. I, I needed just, to see that. I just, I we didn't get the shit thing. Did no, we? We no, we saw Star Wars. Wars. No, and it was even, what's the British guy who plays Peter Parker? Tom Holland. He was like, hey, everybody, I'm Tom Holland. I'm Peter Parker in these movies. Watch this next train that comes out in July. Pip, pip, cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> and then they show and like they he even did like an intro for the trailer. Hashtag Brit washing. Hashtag Brit. That's why I did. I looked over. Brits it. Brit washing. Looked it over at the the old lady and said, "Hey, Brit washing." And she looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And was like, "What?" I was like, "What?" So that's that's a constant look in your home. Then he wants them the Brexit from the superhero universes. Yes. You know, what's an actor Brexit? Brexit. No, I, I forgot the other trailers we got. There. We got. Yeah, like sh- yeah, we got like shitty trailers. Well, fucking the, the trailers that have been out for like three months. I mean, yeah. they weren't bad, but it's like, dude, we've seen these five hundred times. Yeah. yeah. We, oh, there was that. Uh, what was that war movie that Christopher? Nolan did. Oh yeah, that one, Dunk Dunkberg. Yeah, I didn't get that Dunkirk. one. Yeah, we did get that, that was one. Was the one that we said terrible trailer, good, dude. But we're gonna go to DVD. Yeah, we're doing DVD. Terrible we're DVD trailer. In that it's one. a bad trailer. The trailer is just not organized. Oh, we had one for a uh, this like Hispanic comedy called like Tres Idiotas or something. What? Where it's these Hispanic. The, the trailer is subtitled. Yeah. Because it's all in Spanish. It's about these guys who like they go to it's like college and they're the first ones in their families to go to college and they fall in love with like the dean's daughter and all. This. It's like all kooky. It How looks a rom com. We How we not have that. We were in a Latin no, yeah, majority dude, we were theater. Cinco de Mayo Central, and uh, yeah. we didn't get that trailer. We, dude, and of course, the guy next to me is like, if I wanted to read a whole movie, I'd just buy a book or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and he, look, hey. he looks over me, and I was just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like no T and no. Dude, we were bummed though. We because we saw this the Star Wars thing, and and, and I go to fix. I'm like, this is, yeah, it probably yeah. will. Yeah, that's know, what I thought. We're like yeah. opening night, of fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. If, Perfect yeah, time to loot. Yeah, new trailer and fucking it's like nothing. the same fucking trailer. Yeah. I'm like, I and the rest care. of the theater felt the same way too. Yeah. They didn't get one. But clap. It, well, you got the nerds too. You got the opening crowd. So yeah, they're but, gonna be. But disappointed. it was so weird that they reacted so I guess energetic toward the Thor Ragnarok. Because it's fucking awesome. Oh yeah, I just because they fucking play Zeppelin and it matches everything so perfectly. Oh, it's like you're gonna get that was the other one up. we had a uh, what which one was it where they keep oh the mummy trailer yeah the mummy oh, yeah, where the they play trailer. the opening uh, paint it black again and, they just and play again it, oh, they loop it but they but they, yeah. but they don't ever get to the rhythm that is now. so it, irritating that is such a fucking cock tease we, we got the aliens the new one we got that i didn't get that one i think we had an aliens yeah we got that one but it was a little bit longer the mummy was the one i was trying to remember terrible i really want to see the mummy though i do too i mean i'm curious i love tom cruise i don't I'm not going there. I don't but, care if he's crazy. I, you, actually, I like the mummy chick. I think she's hot. She is hot. I like. She's like the best thing in the last Star Trek came out. She's she's like a hot Ooh, version dude, of Atomic Michelle Blonde. Rodriguez. Atomic Blonde looks. Oh awesome. my fucking god! I can't yeah. wait to see Atomic Blonde. And, you know, she's we, good we that have, too. Did you have that trailer? Or oh shit, no, I wish that. the fuck I had the Atomic Blonde. Trailer. Are you kidding? Either one of them. God, the movie's gonna be awesome. That one's definitely. That looks so I'm <laughs> concerned. <laughs> there's not enough masculine rights in Atomic Blonde, <laughs> so I can't wait to see it and do a podcast. True, true. Kingsman, we got to see. Oh, Kingsman, Kingsman, that was the other trailer. one. Oh, never, we, we didn't have that one. Yeah. I, we I, probably had the Hispanic uh, rom-com. Yeah. yeah. Well, I never saw the first one. I, I own the first Kingsman one. Kingsman was good, man. Yeah. Yeah, I just That's Miller. Cool. Yeah, I don't do the Miller stuff. like Miller. I never saw Wanted either. Wanted. <laughs> don't bother. <laughs> it was fucking horrible. <laughs> Which, this guy was just singing his praises because uh, the no, dude from... I showed him that one scene that's Wanted really good. the book is... I read it. I didn't like the book it, either. It's, it's not a book Anything Miller does, he does not like. It's not a book that I No, I like Jupiter Circle. Is in my wheelhouse is I would say something I would enjoy and yet I've read that book probably more than almost any of the books in my collection I love it and it's got its moments it just doesn't uh, well it's just that the, the dude who played the main guy's dad is now on Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. so we were yeah, checking so out I, I showed him that scene where at the in the elevator when he jumps from the elevator he goes through the glass when Cross shoots okay, him yeah. I was telling him that I, that's the movie I saw him and I was like dude I really like this actor and then he popped up on S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm like oh great he's on S.H.I.E.L.D. too great because I really like him he's a cool actor don't know his name all right let me get this Ball rolling track. <laughs> Our next comment comes from Keith G. Baker on negative reviews. I think that's on the Grick who wrote it. I think that one's on the Grick who wrote it. I, I, I don't think on... he's talking English, but that's a capital G, so that might be a reference to something we don't know 
know about. Oh, 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 wait a second. I get it. Well, he's talking about the negative reviews. He's talking about like fucking the infamous swag flu. That's what he's talking about. So no, he's calling swag flu a grick, I believe. I think there was a uh, Grick Dason left a negative one too. So he's uh, like, I don't remember. Grick okay. Is, he's Using call, it as a pejorative, him, his right. own name. Yep. Okay, yep. I can see that. So squad number 62, Tiger 2 and 1 featuring Spider-Man that thing. Love Tiger. I discovered her in the original West Coast Avengers mini and soon found the Marvel team up issue in a flea market. I do not prefer the furry tailed version she became later. The design is much weaker. Her role in Avengers Academy was probably one of the key factors of motivating my picking up that book. At least before I generated a affection, generated for, the affection kids for the kids Got it. who were then killed off in a Death Note Avengers knockoff. Avengers Academy? So. What the fuck was that all about? Uh, that was a thing where they were trading up their own next generation heroes. Whatever superhumans in the Marvel Universe. I think it was tied into Civil War where Tiger sided with Tony Stark and therefore was it pro-registration and pro-regulation of heroes. So they took a bunch of superhumans and were actually trying to make sure to sculpt them into the next generation of Avengers. And then they did a knockoff of you know, not Hunger Games, you could say, or I think the original Japanese. There was Death Note. There was no one Death Note in Japanese. What was the Japanese book? There was the, no the, the Hunger Games ripped off. Battle Royale? Battle Royale, thank you. And so they basically took them and the runaways. They all put them on an island and were killing, having them all kill each other. I think I read some of that. So, yeah. Our next comment comes from Darcy on episode number 62, Tiger 2 1, featuring Spider-Man the Thing. Ah, my heart sank when I heard Ange say he recalled Tiger once ran around in the Hellcat costume. You didn't take the moment to straighten him out. So disappointing. I hang my head in shame. It's yeah, true. you should. That's, that's on you. Uh, I am o, uh, I In my am opinion. O, in my opinion. No, I'm just... I'm just... Well, well you well, haven't our, got a track record our, our, so far. Our, well, because so. you didn't know that one either. J. Mark is a Demetrius. We'll go with it. Okay. Was the first writer to get Greer Nelson's... Get. That's get in quotes. Uh, Greer Nelson's character since uh, Linda Fight. I really like the in Marvel team up number 125, except for the r- reveal that Zabo was supposed to be Donald Bain's brother. That still bothers me. Yeah, that's weird. Is that what happens later on? Do we read that one? Yeah, we... we do, well, I think that was me and Fix-It talking about that one. I okay, think we read, read that one together. Super- or I might have dropped that in there. I think my, maybe during the Ange conversation, I might have dropped that in Why there. Why does everybody always have to be related? It's so dumb. Yeah, I didn't mind it that much. I, I thought it made Zabo more interesting, but I, I'm not married to it. I understand. It seems arbitrary, like the disposition of Dr. Tumalo in Marvel Premiere number 42. By the way, I, by the way, BTW, uh, I believe it's canon that the reveal that the cat people's existence to the general public in number 42 resulted in them evacuating Earth, with the exception of Bal Qatar and Tigra. None of them have been back since. Thanks. God, I forgot about that freaking crazy story. It really story. diminishes Tigra's standing if there's a whole bunch of other cat people running around. So. Yeah, I guess that's true. But, uh, but yeah, I, have... and Ange read those West Coast Avengers and did not seem to be enjoying that whole thing. Not good times for him. Um, also, uh, Patty Cockrum's going to be at uh, Heroes Con. I'm going to see if I can figure out something to ask her and see if I can get some kind of record on there for the some cat action. She drew, I think it's the last issue or the next to the last issue. So I well, could be asking her about... Hmm? Oh, I, why don't you read? Because you're much better at reading than I am. Uh, you read better. He does. My read good. You yes. read real good. My read good. Oh, you read better than the president for sure. Appreciate you. Appreciate uh, you. So li- a couple, couple of presidents, in fact. Uh, Selena Martina, uh, Ghost Rider, the most supernatural hero of all. I found episode 63 really amazing. I'm a big fan of Marvel superheroes. I watch all the movies and also read the comics of all superheroes in my free time, which makes me addictive about them. I mostly follow blogs for Marvel posts, and now I have found this blog too and have bookmarked you, so keep updating. Thank you very much. That's sweet. Let me tell you something right now. If you haven't listened to our Ghost Rider podcast, you are missing out on some great A hilarious bullshit. That is one of my favorite episodes, and I don't even like myself or either of you, and I choose not to listen to our podcast, but I listen to that one over and over again. <laughs> I, I had made a small folder of my podcast for my father to listen to as a greatest hits collection, and Ghost Rider was in that small folder of like I think a half dozen episodes. So, and it was also probably our most successful remote locate because we were we weren't all together. To no, we were in the same room yeah. for that one. No. Yeah, for Ghost Rider. Yeah, no, we weren't. We were here at uh, no, place. no, 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 no. Because remember, there was even at the very end of that one is where he keeps cutting out, and you're like, oh, because he was like, oh, don't we want to oh, talk about the movies? So. And you're like, because remember, I was watching him because he had his stupid camera. On. Okay, I could see him getting into bed. Yeah, stuff. maybe so. Yeah, a bit of a creepy moment. But there. again, we'll have to try to see how many more of those remote ones we can get done now too so no he's got better equipment now. me too well i'm not going to put it through my phone like an idiot so i realized that, that was probably a huge part of the problem is like hey wait the signal's coming from my garbage phone that's like worthless so uh we'll, we'll have to try a higher quality on that front anyway uh joe crawford it was still fucking hilarious how bad that was though that was that, that one of our biggest laugh moments was yeah. that right there <laughs> joe crawford writes uh this episode of rolled spine was a hoot and a holler this is the one ghost rider essential that i don't have sounds like it's definitely worth tracking down oofta uh aka fry Hole wrote just listen to Ghost Rider laughing my ass off as always Tex was born to draw that 90s book don't want to think about fix in bed either <laughs> don't listen to Spawnometer uh... <laughs> Spawn talk on the bed Raven M. Fields on episode 63 I hope I die in my leathers too yeah me too uh, although that recalls
recalls a whole no, conversation with Sean McLaughlin where we were talking about whether or not knickers were something that men wore. Uh, make knickers in the U.S., men's trousers that end below the knee, in the U.K., women's underwear. The more you know. And then, of course, I made a joke about men's leather gear, including some fetish stuff. And uh, Sean was like, does anyone else wonder how he knew where to find this image? And you don't want that image in your mind. Count Drunkulo on episode 63 wrote, I got to say, as offensive and despicable as it was to hear a presidential candidate talk about grabbing people by the pussy, I hope Max introduction to this episode isn't just a topical zinger. I hope you open every episode going forward like, we're going to grab Moon Knight by this pussy this week. I don't think he feels that way anymore. I, I don't remember that comment, but that's fucking like, hilarious. Grab my pussy. Well, I just remember yeah. that because when I was like, oh, let's, we're going to grab this podcast by the pussy, and you're like, oh, that's really dating us. Little did you know, he would <laughs> become did president know. a few no, months later. God yeah, that damn was, it. Uh, God man. damn it. God damn it. We were just so sure. Uh, it it, yeah. So, yeah, I, I, but we do need to grab Moon by, by the pussy, you know. Yeah, 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 I wouldn't mind. I like me some Moon Knight. Uh, Warlord World. Wrote on episode 64, Werewolf by Dead of Night. Lunchtime, listen. Halloween is so big it continues into November with the guys at Rolled Spine talking werewolf. King Size Comics, Giant Size Fun Podcast, aka Kyle Benning, since he hasn't put any out recently. Uh, geez, Alou, Frank. Time context is everything. My Man Wolf two parter recommendation was pre Halloween and werewolf episode. P.S. I know someone who's a big fan of your show and really likes the Defenders if, uh, if you were ever looking for a guest. And again, probably going to be a little bit more of that in the future. So I need to actually read some Defenders myself, though, especially the early stuff. Sean McLaughlin wrote little known fact Jack Russell from Werewolf by Night later played Eddie on Frasier yuck 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 I, I, I had a similar response and he wrote in all caps that's a great joke <laughs> long as it made you laugh I mean, as, long, as long as you got one person laughing humor comes you. in all shapes and sizes keep doing you uh, Count Drunkillo on episode 64 wrote most important comment first was it Shannon Tweed the blonde softcore queen that Mac was trying to remember during this episode moving on yes I love the classic Werewolf by Night series from the 70s and yes it is very melodramatic and Jack is really mopey for the first couple issues but the middle of the run like from issue 11 to 22 or so is outstanding there were two other Dead of Night four part miniseries that came out around this time One Storing Man Thing and One Damon Hellstrom being a fan of the classic series and werewolf stories I tried reading this uh, Werewolf by Night miniseries when it first came out perhaps because I love the original take on Marvel's werewolf so much I hated the changes in this story I never liked the voice or tone of the series and I thought the werewolf panic room was dumb the BBC show Jekyll did the same thing a year or two earlier I never saw Jekyll, so I did not realize that that was being pilfered. I only read the first two issues of the series back in 2009, a few years ago. I tried to go back and read the whole thing and still could not make it past issue number two. Dwayne Zwerski has the dubious distinction of not writing a comic I ever liked, and I've read about 20 of his comics. Anyway, good episode as always. Hey, Fix It, did you ever read any Dwayne Zwerski? Mr. Fix It's Asleep. Yeah, I had a feeling that was the case. I just wanted that. He just woke up. Who's Dre- who? Yep, yep. You, yep, you read you any Dwayne Zwerski? What? You read any Dwayne Zwerski comics? No. I think you did like the latter part of the first cable run, right? Any of you like Soldier X and shit? I didn't read any of that. Okay. I'm Mr. Fixit, and this here is my consigliere, Diablo Frank. The line is Cogliostro. Same difference. Spawn is one of the most successful comic properties of all time, with best-selling books, animated series, toy lines, and etc. That stinky movie, all the lawsuits over who has what rights. Don't be a comedian, Frank. We got business to handle. We're here to pimp out our new show, Spawn Talk. About Todd McFarlane's cursed anti-hero on his fight against the forces of heaven and hell in a doomed quest to be reunited with his beloved wife, Wanda. No, the show is called The Spawnometer, named after the countdown clock on Al Simmons' Hellspawn supernatural power and undead lifespan. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And the gimmick is we're covering one issue of the comic per episode in 22 minutes or less, one minute for each page the comic runs. Then we'll briefly look at another Image Comics creator or series in roughly chronological order, reflecting a quarter century of creators' rights opportunities at the greatest publisher in the industry. Then we're going to dump a letter section and some ads at the end of the show, just like Image Comics does. New shows will appear on the Rolled Spine podcast feed through iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Shout Engine, and the Internet Archives. Until we immediately start blowing our deadlines, just like Image Comics. Shut up. Why do you got to be such a wise guy? That's why you got no friends. There's a Marvel Super. There's a Rolled Spine podcast drinking game. Whenever you mention Vril Docs, I have to grab a beer. I came in not not expecting. I, I kind of a thing I just had to work on. Look, seeing movies that I want to see. Um, just not thinking about them. <laughs> don't get pumped up. Don't mm. get pumped up. Uh, that's that's my uh, mindset going into Wonder Woman. Is just it's a uh, movie. I just go I'm, just go see this little movie. Don't even think about anything else. It's just a movie about an Amazon chick. I Hope think you like I'm it. going. I'm I think going I'm, to go see that with you because I want to see your face. I, 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 I that I'm probably going to do a Thursday night. I'm out, so I figured you and I'd probably be the ones doing yeah, that yeah. one. I, I want to okay. watch your face as we watch that film. I think okay. I'm screwed on that one because I'm totally pumped for it, and I didn't want to be, but my daughter loves Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. She's like, Daddy, we're going to that. We're going to you know, I'm like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and then when they play the Xena music on the end, she's like, that's what I love. 
<laughs> I'm looking forward to it. spending time with my daughter. So, if nothing else, you can get the secondhand enjoyment. If you yeah, don't enjoy the yeah, movie, you'll enjoy her it, enjoying the movie. It Actually, makes it a lot easier. Now that you mention like that, it's kind of the same way because I feel like Frank is like fix it and nice daughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're gonna enjoy him enjoying. Yeah, him yeah him we're gonna go. We're gonna we're gonna take little Diablo Frank here, and he can he can wear his uh, bullets and bracelets and shit. We can go out. Yeah. She's and we'll, so we'll sit him down. We'll sit him down in there and buy him a little popcorn and a soda. They'll probably have a Wonder Woman special glass or something. I wouldn't count on that shit, man. She's not getting promoted very well, no. Really? She's on they Dr. Are, Pepper they, cans. Dude, we were, talking Period. About, we were talking about that the other night. They aren't promoting that at yeah. all. Yeah. Because he asked me, he goes, isn't that kind of weird that they haven't shown any trailers? I'm like, well, maybe they're waiting for the Galaxy, the, the GOG wave to go by. When does that movie come out? Uh, Next in a few weeks. Yeah. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, it's yeah, like the first weeks. or second week of June. Yeah. No, it's the first week. It's the first week of June, yeah. yeah. Like June 2nd or 3rd or something Is that like that. Early? It'll yeah. be, they'll ramp it up here soon. That's what they keep saying. In, but it's like at this point in time, there are so many more tie-ins with Suicide Squad. Uh, fine, Batman vs Superman. It's Batman. It's Superman. But fucking Suicide Squad was on fucking coke cans and chip bags and all this other kind of bullshit. Well, and no, basically, did, Wonder Woman's got like some bullshit diet bar cereal well, thing. No, 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 no. She's on and, coke and cans. And she's on Dr Pepper. Yeah, that's yeah, period. Yeah. That's if you go to the store, that's all you're going to see that. Super... And and they're doing the whole DC tie-ins with a bunch of the General Mills breakfast cereals. And she's on like Special K. Yeah. Oh yeah. I saw the Batman, the one with the little bee dressed as Batman. Yeah. Dave Johnson drew that. Yeah, really? That's a nice piece. I like Amanda it. Connor did the Trix Rabbit as Superman. Dave Johnson? Yeah, Dave Johnson did it. No yeah. shit. It's the little... Uh, be- uh, Dr. Ange wrote on uh, his purchases of the cat issues two through four, which basically puts a lie to my trolling him on that front. Uh, hashtag dollar box joy. I truly blame Diablo Frank at Rolled Spine. Nothing says evil like Yodfers and a writing crop. I love saying Yodfers because it sounds nothing like it's written. Uh, these dated references are so groovy. The original Squirrel Girl. Yeah, but favorite panel ever. Uh, um, and Squirrel, really squirrel empathy. <laughs> I love squirrel empathy so much. Why haven't we gotten a tiger? Have we gotten a tiger a squirrel girl team up with Patsy in there? Hopefully I have no too? idea. I've never read anything. Of squirrel. Uh, we need to read some damn squirrel girl, especially because she's going to be on a TV show and we need to, you know, get a, get out in front of that. I hate squirrel girl. I will say, did you guys get the uh, runaways trailer that got out and then they reel it back in again? So you can't see it anymore. No, I saw the no. cloak and dagger one. Yeah, the cloak and dagger one didn't really do too much for what? me. Cloak and, oh, cloak and dagger right. is going to be a free form. The former ABC family. That is going to be a show. So that's going to be a thing. That one didn't really do much for me, but watching the Runaways trailer, which was bullshit bootleg cell phone stuff, that looked fucking cool. And I did not appreciate, because I, I read Runaways back, uh, your your ex Pussycats, is, uh, uh, I read her Vaughn. little like manga-sized uh, collections of that, and I did not appreciate how cinematic the stuff that was in that story was until I saw it adapted to screen. It's like, holy shit, this translates so well. This is probably going to be a better TV show than it ever was as a comic book. So I'm, I think I might actually have to set aside time and watch Watch the Runaways. Cloak and Dagger, I never really cared for as a concept, and the trailer didn't really do a lot for me. I don't even know. What, what is Runaways? What is this? Some that, it came out post-2000, so that's why you have oh, no okay. recollection of 10-4. it. Did involve mutants, tangentially. It's a cool premise, though. We'll do something about that closer to time. Uh, and finishes with really wonderful art by Marie Severin and Wally Wood, which, you know, that's a true statement universally. If you have art by Marie Severin and or Wally Wood, then you're set. Joe Crawford wrote, Woke up to the news, a new Rolled Spine podcast, just what I needed. Grant Richter wrote, Just the to the Doctor Strange movie episode. Thanks for the shout out. Sean McLaughlin wrote of Marvel Studios Doctor Strange. The last 10 minutes is podcast county gold. Oh yes. Your uh, uh, scatological humor was quite uh, welcome. You remember that one? No. You remember the last 10 minutes of the Doctor Strange episode? Where it's talking about you taking a shit oh. in great detail? Oh yeah. That was good stuff. You didn't like that so much? Well it was at my expense so maybe not as much <laughs> as you. <laughs> I mean, Vixen liked it. Count Dracula wrote of that same episode, Great episode as always. I saw the movie in 2D, and like you guys, I want to make the effort to see it again in IMAX 3D. Overall, I enjoyed the film a lot. It's not my favorite Marvel movie, but it's not at the bottom of the list either. It's in the middle. I also agree that the first act of the film was probably the weakest, with the film not having the courage to make Steven a genuine asshole. Hear, hear. Uh, I also got a really bad feeling from the opening fight with the Ancient One and Kaecilius' disciples. But also, as you pointed out, after the car crash, the movie really picked up. I had one nagging problem that wasn't a real problem with the movie at all, but it pulled me out of the film because of my knowledge of the comics. Kaecilia should have been called Mordo because that was the character he was playing. Chuetel Edgio Four's character was something completely different, and it was indeed interesting. But he should have had a completely different name because he was an original character, or, or the Silver Dagger. Or Mordo and Wong should have been combined into one character named Wong because there wasn't enough for both of them to do. Since the movie left no indication that Wong would be functioning against 
strange manservant in the sequel. And since that's kind of tired and potentially racist stereotype anyway, it would be a lot more interesting to turn Wong into the fallen ally who decides to hunt and kill magic users in the future. I think Tilda Swinton gave the most enjoyable performance, I agree, but I still think whitewashing the ancient one should have been avoided. Joel Legio 4's talent was wasted on Mordo. He could have been an amazing ancient one. I'm not, no, Asian dude. On the other hand, I did like the gender swapping of the character, so maybe Marvel could have cast an older Asian actress like Michelle Yeoh. And despite liking Benedict Cumberbatch, I don't think his performance was as solid or memorable as some of the other leading men in Marvel movies. Yes, this is true. Uh, he did not mention his performance very much in that podcast for a reason. In fact, Mads Michelson would have been a more captivating and ever so slightly less waspy Doctor Strange. Ultimately, even though I love the cast members in isolation, I felt like there were five great actors for four parts and they could have mixed that around a little. Uh, one other issue was the use of magic or rather the lack of creepy, weird magic stuff as well as the lack of humor. The film needed a few comedic beats during the training studying uh, montage where Stephen cast spells that didn't work. We should have got a scene with Stephen making a hand gesture and uttering an incantation and then a portal opens and the tentacles of Shuma Gorath spring out and start pulling him in. That would have been cool. I'm always and, down for Shuma Gorath Yeah, uh, well, and ever since the, Shuma the video Gorath. game, right? Shuma Gorath in a video game. Yes. Playable. Yes. To fight with. Yes. This blew my mind as a kid. That, like, was, that was so cool. I was, like, I I was know, so I know surprised Thanos, that was a thing Iron that happened. Spider-Man or Shuma Gorath? And he was cool. Yeah, and he was good. And it's a cool name to say, too. Yeah. Slamming him to the floor and Wong Mordo has to come and help him. The scene would be used for humor and show a little bit of the weirdness that magic can achieve. Another similar bit could be used with Steven casting a minor spell that unleashes a demon spider or something that has to be contained. I saw enough of that in Harry Potter things. Then these bits can be paid off during the final battle when Steven is fighting Kaiselis' disciples in Hong Kong. During the running battle, he opens the portal again and the tentacles reach out and grab one of the bad guys and drag him or her off screaming to some other dimension. Now, that is cool. Tentacles, yes. Demon spider, no. Um, <laughs> anyway, despite some problems, I like the movie. I'm excited to see more of the character in Avengers 3 and an inevitable sequel. No, forget Ragnarok. Great episode and good on Fix It for catching the bad guys turning into the mindless ones at the end. I do not think that Edgeo 4 is wasted because it's pretty clear that he's going to be in the next Doctor Strange movie. They basically set him up as the main villain for that one. Yeah, I, thought so. that was, I thought that was good to make him be a good guy for the entire film yes. and then use him as and the bad then have guy. Him turn like, at the end. I got yes. no problem with that. At His all. motivation is solid. So yes. Yeah. And, I, and I really liked him. I liked him as that, as a character, not necessarily as that character as Mordo, but I like him being in the movie. I liked his presence. I thought he brought value to the first movie and I think he's going to be even cooler in the second movie. And, and really when you think about it, Mordo and Doctor Strange in the comic books, they don't really have a relationship until they meet the ancient one, right? And really then, I don't really know if they have much of a... Whereas now they fought side by side together yeah. and they overcame, you know what I mean? And then they seriously had a... When he violated their law by changing time, it just... It, drove Mordo away. I don't I think that you've already got motivations and stuff set up for the second one. They did a good job. Mordo was never a character that I was particularly wild about. I just couldn't get excited about Mordo because he popped up so often and he was so often beaten. He was just kind of a gateway to Dormammu most of the time. So he, he needed a little something. And, yeah. and I don't think Silver Dagger would adapt that great as he is in the comics because he's kind of a goofy looking character. So turning Baron Mordo into Silver Dagger for me worked because you yeah, still have the weight know, of an arch enemy. About, I didn't think about it until you mentioned right now, but the the Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Mordo will have nothing to do with Dormammu. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, uh, which is good, too, because I think we need to have a Mordo be a bad guy. We need to let Dormammu yeah, do let his thing, too. Yeah, let them be their own bad people. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And I also I got to say, I really appreciate that D Doctor Strange opened up the Marvel Cinematic Universe to magic because that contributed mightily to how great the last season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was. Basically, what they were talking about uh, at the end of this current season is that they have to wait for Marvel to unlock certain things for them to have access to it. They they could not use Hydra until the Winter Soldier did what they were going to do with Hydra. They could not use going to outer space until that was unlocked by Guardians of the Galaxy. Doctor Strange unlocked magic and they used that to great effect. So as Marvel allows them to use more elements of the cinematic universe, they're using them more effectively and making for a better show. So I'm, if nothing else, I'm grateful to Doctor Strange for letting that happen, for finally opening that door. Also, I just want to say we saw Wonder Woman in 3D and the best 3D of that experience was watching Ragnarok's trailer in 3D. Fuck 
fucking awesome. Just even better. It's so orgasmic as it is. And then you're seeing Hela's horns come at you or you're seeing the uh, logo fly through space and then all the rocks are flying around in the background. Yep. Just fucking rad. Yep. Very much looking forward to that film. And like I was telling Mr. Fix-It, I don't want there to be any plot. I don't want any plot. I want it to be Hulk and Thor demolishing aliens from all across the universe. I'm not looking for some intricate story. You don't need to tie it into this or that. Just have a well, again, but they're going to lead the in movie. Ragnarok is going to lead into Infinity War, though. Yeah, so that's the one thing. Now, I, I think that the director has made it clear that he has only so much patience for all that bullshit, and I don't think he's going to let that bullshit get in the way of his telling a badass story. I hope the movie can live up to how awesome that trailer was. Cisco, I wrote to the Doctor Strange episode. Haven't commented in a while because I'm super late on my podcast listening. He's doing a through time as far as the comments goes. Ring sling. But I just saw Doctor Strange, so it made sense to start catching up here. Frank didn't rip to shreds, which is the real surprise, but I'm on your wavelength. While Marvel Cinematic usually put in the, a solid effort, the formulaic nature of superhero origin stories is starting to get to me. Doctor Strange is very much a magical Iron Man, and I don't just mean the movie. It's true of the comics, too. Maybe I've hit my saturation level on these films. I like them, like discovering Easter eggs, but I'm no longer really excited by them or surprised by them. Linked. It's a fun lark at the theater, and there's really nothing wrong with that, and maybe it's enough. With Frank on Mordo, I think we may finally have a second good Marvel villain after Loki because they're allowed they're allowing us to invest in it. People who bitch about the DC movies, there there is a people who the, bitch the, about the movies the, or do not bitch about well, the movie or, well, or defend the movies. They do because we are people has, who bitch about the DC movies. So yeah. you're talking to us, basically. If, if you love if you like cartoons, DC's crushing Marvel mm. with with their cartoon movies. The DC ones are far superior. Well, I, think, I, I think you can I argue. Don't know, we te- just watched the Teen. I think that one. used to be true. I don't know if that's true anymore. I think you can argue the TV. I, I just don't think Marvel tries with the cartoons. Do they even no, try? They really not that great. No. It seems like DC literally tries yeah. with their cart. Like we're well, they putting have a, we're putting it into theaters yeah. and stuff. I we have an DC- animated film division targeting uh, uh, audiences that are supposed to cross promote with the actual live action movies, and we're going to give you this adaptation of the Judas Contract, and we're going to give you, you the Killing like, Joke. You guys didn't like it. It's okay. It was okay. I, I think it was way better than I thought. It was. I think TV. Well, yeah, because I thought it'd be absolute garbage. It was ta- it well, was see, all right. I, I was lucky. I had Frank here, so I would say, "Hey, Frank, is this in the book?" Hey, yeah, Frank, he was. He was actually referencing how much they referenced the Frank would be like, story. well, actually, the character here is a combination of multiple, and I'm like, cool. The Dark Justice League all day. movies, bad. Which one? The Dark Justice League movie. Oh, yeah. Bad. No, 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 no. I, all the the Batman Killing Joke was a fist fuck You to told me it was so bad, I didn't even watch it. It's, I own it just to punish myself. If I so, want to kick myself um, in the balls, Throne like, of Atlantis, Justice League War. Throne of Atlantis was fantastic. Was it? Okay, he <laughs> told me. How dare I, you? No, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. He told me it was bad. It's one of the best. No, Arkham Asylum by far is the best. No, by far is not the best. Doom, New Frontier, Christ, New Frontier. I still need to buy your fantastic. prizes. I need to watch that one. New Frontier is fantastic. Hey, Doom, I haven't seen any of these. I don't Doom, care. Uga, shut, Uga, up. Uga, shut up. Everybody shut up. Uga, Chuck. No, but what I'm going to say is you, you can make the argument when you compare DC TV shows to Marvel TV shows. Yeah. Because I think Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has just been running on movie fumes. For oh, no, 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 no. The Frank. current season is fucking badass. I quit. Really so you liked it? Season. I couldn't make you it like, the pilot. Wait, 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 Frank. You liked the, the way it ended up? Well, we got two more episodes, dude. Do we? Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. No way. Yeah, we got two more no, episodes. Dude, dude, this we, season has been fantastic. They still got to deal with the LMDs, man. They got to deal with the dark hole. They got to deal with the LMDs, dude, man. Dude, this season Shit. has been fantastic. Well, okay, fine. Yeah. Um, but, and but, I watched The Flash. All right. And I watch Arrow. Well, I don't watch Arrow no more. And I can't watch the DC Legends because that's just horrible. I got on YouTube and I watched The Flash monkey fights and they were mm. fantastic. I, 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 and I, I need I, to see and, that. And I read that I didn't have to watch anything else. So yeah, like, no, sweet. pretty much, yeah. I mean, right now I'm watching to see who Savitar is. But even, even I there, know. even I already know who it is, dude. Yeah. Even though DC's doing okay with their TV shows, I, I don't think it's at the level of Marvel. Like the story their, their highs aren't good. as high, but their lows aren't as low. Yeah, true. They're very My nice and middling. Super woman, super Supergirl. Woman. Yeah. Oh, that's Frank here. Too. Yeah, that's I, I'm, I'm behind. They can, I'm, I'm, a, I'm behind. He's our daughter. He's they our daughter. They can braid each other's hair as they watch it next time. <laughs> I have been taking. Your hair is I've been, getting long. I've, I've, been, I've been. I use clips at work sometimes. Yeah. That's a nice. No, don't lie. You use scrunchies. Don't lie. You use scrunchies. You do not use clips. No, no, no. I use hairbands and clips to keep up a professional appearance. Okay. Is it one, well, the women spring loaded, call those scrunchies. The sprung, the uh, spring-loaded jaw clip things. Yeah, yeah. I got that. Oh I don't, I don't, 
don't wear those to work. You know what? I don't wear those to work, though. I wear those when I'm driving. Next time you see him, he's going to have a man bun. He's going to have a man bun. I've already done man buns. No, don't stop. Stop, 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 stop. Because you can't take these things back. You can't go back in Pandora's box. You're going to do And he said it with pride. I've had a man bun. How do you feel about that, Mac? I don't want to talk about it. Come on, Mac. I don't want I don't want to Let talk. it flow. Ooga chaka. Ooga. Ooga. <laughs> yeah, it's anyway, your turn. So, okay, we got to stop. Count Dracula wrote of episode 66. Shout of the devil, son of Satan. I was walking down the street listening to this episode when I stopped abruptly and started to crack up. The reason, Max line, the first line in your autobiography has to be, I feel like I missed the boat on the whole Satanism thing. Uh, it needs to be. <laughs> Kyle Benning wrote of the same episode uh, after you shouted him out as a, or, or unmasked him as a Satanist, whichever the case may be. Well, that's a good way to ensure I won't listen. So he just stopped listening to our, this episode too. Damn it, I this called is, we're all shedding of our, our readership. I called all of our <laughs> listeners uh, Satan worshippers. Everyone relax. I'm the gun wrote of that episode. Uh, by no means representative, but this fun Marvel fanfare story is my only experience with the Son of Satan. I'm intrigued by the Heath-drawn Son of Satan issue mentioned in this episode. Bet that looks as good in black and white as it does in color. I'm sure. That's oh, fucking yeah, awesome, for though. sure. Do you want to say that I, I, I own that issue of Marvel fanfare? I bought it specifically for Patty, Patsy Walker coverage that we still haven't gotten to so but it'll it'll come inevitably unless we just stop doing the podcast that's always an option too justice first dawn wrote the episode hits on one of my oddball favorites have a devil of a time with the newest rolled spine joe crawford wrote i think the only son of satan i have is hellstorm number one well worth the quarter i think most of my exposure to him was in the defenders uh wait i forgot i had the these two essential marvel horror volumes because i haven't read them yet looks like a lot of hellstorm to be had here flipping through looks like it has some nice marvel mag pieces in it the oddballs are the best i read all the epic superhero line because of it of these knuckleheads covering dr zero don't put that on me man uh, although i did buy the critical mass miniseries because of, you know of our own episode like echoing back on me as well uh i just want to say that i i get my comics through mail order and one month my company accidentally sent me the marvel horror essential volume and uh i'm a dumbass i'm honest i was like hey you guys sent that to me so they're like okay send it back so i sent it back no reward no thank you just like here's your packing number send it back to us and i sent it back uh uh, so I could have had that for free. They never know. They never know. But, they never know. Uh, unfortunately, I missed out on it because I opened my big dumb mouth, uh, which I always do. Uh, um, social programming I can't help it. Siskoid wrote, "You triggered a memory. You know when I was talking about how the about those j- big jumbo books with very random translated comics in black and white. Well, Son of Satan was definitely among those stories. Next to the reprinted Thor's, Fantastic Four's, and Flashes, there was a lot of '70s fair that probably mystified me at the time because those books were nowhere to be seen on the English language." Shang Chi, Warlock, Champions, and Fils de Satan. That's awesome. I, I I wish that sounds better than Son of Satan. Son of Satan. Son of that Satan. sounds cool. But uh, yeah, I I didn't get. I got some oddball Bronze Age stuff uh, growing up, but no Son of Satan. I think that it might have changed the course of my life. If I had that would have been awesome. Ugh. But I do have the first two Shang Chi Omnibuy because I am a big Paul Galassi fan. So at some point we'll have to try to break that shit down. Another reason why I bought it is because with all the Sax Romer stuff between it's not being PC and the fact that Marvel has the license Fu Manchu from the Roma estate anytime they do anything with Shang-Chi related specifically to Fu Manchu there's no idea how long those Omnibuy will be in print or if they'll ever be available they're not on Marvel Digital so I need to start reading those to see if I want to get the successive volumes because I like Mike Zek too and that's where he broke into comics but I'm just not sure if I'm willing to commit Zek did Shang-Chi Omnibuy yeah. Yeah, I think right. he probably had a longer run on that than anything yeah, so think, like I either think, that or no, Captain I America I, just, I never read any of that I've never read any Shang-Chi anything but when you said Paul Galois I'm like, yeah, I know Paul Galassi did Shang-Chi. And then when you mentioned Mike Zack, I'm like, oh, yeah, Mike Zack did a bunch of Shang-Chi stuff. Well, I actually got a Shang-Chi comic at a flea market in one of their bullshit pulled together grab bag. I think I got like Shang-Chi and then the Titans drug comics or some shit like that. But I had one random Galassi issue and it quite probably was the first thing I ever saw by Galassi. Oh, interesting. And I've remained a fan ever since. Although the thing I really remember making me a fan was the Valkyrie miniseries. That was hot. So anyway, Martin Gray wrote of the same episode. Great work on the Son of Satan show. Damon isn't the English spelling for of demon it's the pretentious trying to be literary spelling i love damon's superhero look the name or similarity never struck me and he's just a sexy sexy man mind i can't say the smell of sulfur is any more enticing than the smell of fish oh and while i'd always found the similarity between zatanna and satana vaguely amusing i'd never made the connection about backward speak satanism blimey did you see sometimes i think he's just toying with us with these britishisms uh ah. did you <laughs> see damon's most recent appearance in the power man iron Fist tweet Christmas special the other week. No, I do not buy current Marvel comics and I let my Marvel Unlimited subscription lapse because I'm an asshole. I need to get that back on. I just don't read enough shit on there though. That's the only problem. They 
put him in a certain outfit and missed the most obvious joke. Too obvious, never. I made it in my review, so it's obviously acceptable. And there's a link which I need to put in the show notes. Uh, yeah, I'm shameless Muriel. I don't know what a Muriel reference is. Martin Gray's awesome. We do love us a Martin Gray. Though. Storm Chaser, aka Grant Richter, another alias, uh, wrote the episode. Son of Satan really is a character that, though there is some potential, never really found its niche. I agree that if Marvel had gone the prestige format full of sex and violence root in the 70s, the character might have caught on better. Trying to make him a pseudo-satanic superhero, especially in a pair of red tights and a generic Party City devil costume cape, is just too goofy for work. Which is why he was cool as a defender, because they were that was kind of their wheelhouse. This was never more apparent than when Marvel brought him temporarily out of retirement in West Coast Avengers, complete with a masked costume and the first use of the rather uninspired Hellstorm codename. Is that where that happened? Uh, the overuse of characters like Spawn, the Midnight Sun's Ghost Rider, and their various derivations, including Damon's own t- self-titled series in the 90s, has now made the trope of the Dark Supernatural anti-hero almost a joke, but did not stop us from doing a podcast about one of those characters. I agree that one way to make Hellstorm Strum viable would be to double down on his dark nature and reboot him as a full-on villain. Marvel tried this in the early aughts with the Hellcat miniseries, but the effort came across as contrived and was eventually retconned away. Given that Son of Satan was an attempt to capitalize on movies like The Omen, I always thought it would be interesting to reimagine Damon by loosely pattering him off of Sam Neill's character from The Omen 3, a billionaire who appears decent on the surface but is secretly trying to seduce literally and figuratively various superheroes to evil and tie him more to Lovecraftian themes like Shumagorath and the many angled ones. I like how we're getting multiple Shumagorath references. Every, every time you hear a Shumagorath reference, take a shot. Uh, like you said, the idea of a satanic character doesn't really work in the Marvel Universe because the supernatural is just a science we don't understand. Any use of Judeo-Christian mythology in a Marvel title came, comes across as being outside of continuity. Hellstrom would really come across much better if transplanted to DC where the supernatural is much more of a thing and they have firmly established analogs for heaven and hell. Yeah, this, uh, they, kind of that already happened because they did the Lucifer series. It was a long-running, successful book. So Siskoid wrote of episode 67, oh boy, the Entertainment Weekly's The 50 Most Powerful Superheroes. Yikes. Obviously, these lists are always bullshit, especially if designed for the normies. So I'm... <laughs> I'm a, that, that's just becoming a term, right? That's, that's like the, a, that's the most perfect Siskoid comment I've ever heard in my <laughs> life, and you've only read the first sentence of it. So I'm here for your reactions and random conversations. If I may try to justify Buffy, the show used the term superhero all the time to describe Buffy. So in name, in universe, she's a superhero. Fuck Buffy, shut up. Just kidding, I love you, keep listening. <laughs> Uh, and can you really argue the point and still think Morpheus has a place on this list? Uh, I'm trying to think who should be on the list and wasn't at all. Spawn, Ghost Rider, yes and yes. Uh, not my favorites, but have more media exposure than some of this list's bottom feeders. What about the tick? Uh, what about the tick? That's yeah, a very, tick? that's an excellent suggestion is the tick. I think, Did I think we bring we, up I, the tick? We, no, we brought If up, we didn't, we needed to. We I, that's a up, major oversight. Yeah, we brought up Spawn, we brought up Ghost Rider, but we did not bring up the tick. The tick is, I mean, man. Anyway, uh, or heck, isn't there a character from Heroes who is more culturally relevant than some of those. Yes, you're probably right. Save the cheerleader. I still find myself saying save the cheerleader, save the world. Mighty Mouse? At least they didn't try to sell us on Kick-Ass. Yeah, Kick-Ass is a thing that people really seem to have forgotten to ever exist, yeah, right? It, it, I think it happened. It came Nobody out the wrong time. Kick-Ass. I mean, even old Fix will bust out with a fucking wanted reference every now and again. But yeah. Like, Kick-Ass? Yeah, that, that was the thing. And we liked that movie okay. Yeah. First one, I, I suffered the second one. It was not... Didn't watch. Not... Don't don't start didn't now. Didn't watch. Uh, Dr. Ange commented just listen to this with some interest. The list, as you say, is insane for a number of reasons. For me, it is clear that this list was put together with Frank's agenda in mind. So characters with a current political reference, re- sorry, so characters with a current political relevance might be a little higher than you would expect. And I think that plays into some of the bigger questions you had. A uh, few specific comments. Dr. Manhattan Morpheus. These guys are on the list because you know they are in every college syllabus in every class regarding comics. Heck, they might be on the reading list of the cool literature professor at college. That is a relevant so they had to be on the list. Green Arrow, probably a bit higher than you expected because of his socially conscious stories of the 70s. I think it's all about the TV show. He cared for more than the blue and purple people. His sidekick was a junkie, so he had an Im- he made an impact. Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, when Kelly Sue DeConnick took over the book, she made big news. No more skimpy black bathing suit and high heel boots, thigh high boots. She was in a flight suit. She was claiming the name Captain Marvel because she was a leader. She was a brief icon, so she makes the list. This 
isn't a knock. I love DeConnick's run, but I think her modern push is about what got her here. Buffy, for a similar reason as Marvel. Buffy was the hero. Xander was the damsel in distress. Buffy's show had the Willow Tara Tara a relationship back before that was mainstream. She has Whedon's name attached to her, and her comic is still running strong. Uh, Flash surprised Frank dumped on the Flash as much as he did. Shouldn't be surprised. I hate the fucking Flash. Uh, for me, the big <laughs> significance is he was the beginning of the DC Silver Age. Nobody gives a shit. Take away showcase number four, and you have a very different comic universe. Better one. That alone ah! nudges him up. But he also has two TV series. Neither one of them is particularly good. Well, I pull like that second one. I, I keep seeing that the uh, John Wesley ship show for like 10 bucks for the entire series, and I just can't pull the trigger on it. Uh, yeah, Back in the, the, the uh, Wasteland years where we had like no superhero stuff, I still only watched a few episodes of the show and just lost interest in it. Um, let's see. He has a comic family of speedsters. Yeah, that's so stupid. He deserves that spot. Uh, Wolverine, he was everywhere for a while in Marvel books. He was his own. He was in his own books. He was a member of every super team. He was like printing money. I suppose he deserves his spot just for that. Wolverine was, you know, it's it's hard for me to appreciate that Wolverine isn't like the hugest thing anymore because he was so fucking yeah, huge so throughout weird. the 80s and 90s. And it's like he's really kind of slid off. I mean, yep. people don't, I, you know, part of that's Marvel's doing that just like kind of forced that to happen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well that and appearing in like two of uh, his three, four solo movies have fucking a bunch of shitty movies. Yeah, a lot of shitty know. Wolverine movies though. And one yeah. good one with Logan. Uh, some people like The Wolverine. I never finished it. Oh. I watched okay, parts of it on cable right. and just couldn't like I, no, I didn't hate it I just wasn't interested oh, man, enough to look, follow and finish it uh, we should have done a podcast on it I might have given enough of shit but no uh, I suppose he deserves his spot on the list uh, I, I'm not knocking the idea that putting in socially relevant heroes higher Black Panther and Wonder Woman both seem high but they should be up front with it put social commentary as a category for point then it all makes sense sorry if this was too long it was not too long We're, the episode is probably going to be too long but not the comment yeah and I, I, I totally agree with him that should have just been one of the fucking categories and then you don't have to oh, oh my gosh yeah, yeah. so stupid well they, they're not proper nerds at Entertainment Weekly so they did not have good qualifiers they did not use a proper scientific method what does it have so many categories and you don't have that one they don't mean anything to yeah Justin's first dawn wrote of speaking of Wolverine episode 68 20th Century Fox's Logan bloody adamantium hell awaits with Logan and rolled spine Cal L fanatic wrote what the fuck is adamantium uh, we would ask fix but he's passed the fuck out of course uh, Keith G Baker wrote it's the cheaper aluminum vibranium alloy used in Avengers Mansion sighting. Just saw Logan this afternoon. I'll let you know if your assessment is full of shit. Did he ever let us know? I don't remember commenting. I, uh, and Alamantium is, uh, Mr. Fixit is super fucking Hispanic and he's saying El Adamantium, but he's saying it quickly because he speaks quickly so he's saying El Adamantium and it sounds like Alamantium. And I say that it's the primary ingredient in Chinese ring cream. King Size Comics Giant Size Fun Podcast wrote, the fuck word really fix it? Fix it's movie synopsis should have had squirrel inserted every 30 seconds. Squirrel! Squirrel! Uh, Holy ADHD tangents. Frank hates farms. Got it. Good to know we're safe here in Iowa from a visit from the idle head. You are correct, sir. I was totally cool with the Zack Snyder Superman hey. movie until all hey. that fucking Kansas bullshit. Miss Mac Say no lived. to farm age. Miss Mac lived in Iowa. Hated it. <laughs> Whole family hated it. They moved like immediately. They hated it so bad. Paquita's got a friend that moved to Iowa from the Dakotas and looks down upon Iowa as a Dakotan. Whoa. Whoa. Uh, that's where they lost you, huh? It wasn't the PS1 level special effects or shit story it was the farms the farms didn't help okay superheroes from farms are not my bag uh, that's why I hate it so much when people try to talk like Captain America's from the, the bread basket he, he's, for, he's from the real America it's like fucking, fucking Brooklyn they, they, I'm talking about before the movies of course yeah. before the movies people thought that he was like from the heartland it's like, fuck you man he's a New Yorker uh, now that I've alienated even more red states than I usually do Sean McLaughlin wrote Shane is not a World War 2 movie it's the opposite of a World War 2 movie and it's totally about not going with the crowd jeez guys Shane never heard of her, is what I wrote back. Uh, he wrote, you're dead to me with a teddy bear. And I was like, who said that Shane was a World War II movie? And he's like, it was you, Frank. Go to the Shane, co Shane Corner. Shane Corner? Shane Corner. Okay. But yeah, no, I don't remember. I still remember. I don't. I, I knew that Shane wasn't a World War II movie. I don't. I think. I don't know. Who gives a shit? It's fucking. Anyway. I don't know. Logan was a good podcast. I got to re-listen now. That you, oh, you didn't watch that uh, movie, did you? What, Logan? Yeah. Uh, I did with you guys, and we did a podcast on it. See, it kind of shipped my mind. I like the movie pretty well, but it's, it's like... I obviously didn't have a lot of traction in my brain because I've already... That, that's another one it. where it was everybody was like, oh, well, this is it. This is the greatest comic book movie ever made, finally. And then I and forgot I'm just all like, that. Eh. I mean, it was good, but what? It was, uh, it was solid. Yeah, it was, it, was the, it was my favorite X-Men movie. Nah, I wouldn't even go there. Shut uh, up, idiot. Uh, Siskoid wrote, uh, good show. I liked Logan Fine, just like a I like uh, Deadpool Fine. One of the things I liked was that they didn't feel the need to explain the alternate future's backstory, what the Westchester and 
person it was, etc. They don't even have to show it in a future movie or anything. The fewer links to that tortured continuity, the better. The scariest thing, those driverless transport truck. Burr. Given her screen presence, it would seem a shame not to return to X-23 someday, perhaps as the next Wolverine, just like in the comic. But would people embrace another X film that takes place in the future? I'm up for it. It's not like the world has changed that much. I'm more interested in that than any more X-Men team fi- films anyway. I did not like Days of Future Past. And my whole thing is there's a, there's a huge precedent for characters from X-Men's futures come back through time and serve on the team actively. X-Men has all kinds of time travel shit. There's an entire team of X-Men right now that are the original X-Men from the 60s transplanted to our times and trying not to live to the future that they are aware of. Yeah, you should have seen the face Mac was making. So yeah, there's no reason why they can't have X-23 turn up in one of these movies, but it wouldn't be the New Mutants because my understanding is they're going to make that into a horror movie, which I find very interesting. I'm actually wow. much more interested in the New Mutants after hearing that than I was before because they were talking about how they're going to adapt the Demon Bear story arc that Sidney Kovac did. It's like, how does that even work as live action instead of as drawings? And it's like, oh, well, we're going to do basically a horror movie. It's like, with Mutants? Huh, that's that's novel. I want to see that shit. I, I love superheroes mixed with horror when it's done well, which isn't very often. So I'm in the bag for that already. They have to kind of shave me off now. Do something different. Let's do it. Yes. Strangest fucking thing, man. Who would have thought that I'd be like, Vox, what innovative company. Those guys really have a handle on what to do with superheroes going into the future. Yeah. Two hundred and twenty-nine different characters spanning the galaxies of the Legion of Superheroes, presented across seven comic book issues. A new miniseries as part of the Who's Who podcast. To handle this many characters, the Irredeemable Shag is bringing in a ringer. Or maybe we should call them flight ringers. Who's who in the Legion of Superheroes? Who's who in the Legion of Superheroes? Who's who in the Legion of Superheroes? The Legion of Superheroes. in the Legion of Superheroes? The Legion of Superbloggers team up to present Who's Who in the Legion of Superheroes, a three-episode miniseries in 2017, part of the Who's Who podcast on the Fire & Water Podcast Network. Long live the Legion. Which is kind of why I want to go back to Fry Hole right quick. So you always like the cosmic stuff. Yes. You like Thor. There's overlap. Obviously, there's a whole universe of Marvel stuff that all these characters play around in. I but was, what brought you I specifically was... to Annihilation and the Guardians of the Galaxy? Because you're like, I think, the only person in this room that is a fan of the comic book Guardians of the Galaxy, right? Am no, I right I, with that? I like No, before him, though. Like, he gave you the books that made you a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy, though, didn't he? You, you were, I mean, you no, might... You gotta be... be careful. He doesn't like giving me credit for anything. So. <laughs> it has <laughs> to be. Because he bought them and gave them to you to read. This is just chronological, man. Well, no, he it's might have read the 90s series, if though. If he needs that justification, he can have it, but I don't remember. I well, will no. say yeah. that he's loved Thanos, I think, as long as I have, so oh, before. Maybe, maybe that was part of it. Yeah, yeah. Thanos, he, he didn't get the hand-me-down no, Thanos. No, the books, Thanos so that didn't helps. come until later, though. Like, I remember you gave me... Thanos, I'll give you, I'll give you, Thanos, Thanos was part of Annihilation right from the get-go. No, but you gave me the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff. I remember that, because that's when I... I never really read Star- Star-Lord before, and I was reading it at that time. And I was like, man, this Well, is that stuff didn't come out until after Annihilation, though. Well, no, I mean, no, no, there was stuff that came up. Fix it was a fan of Thanos when we first met. That's one yeah. of the things we bonded over. No, no, no. Uh, so when I first got into to comics, I got in right when uh, the Thanos quest came out. Right, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I ended up there weren't many trades at that time, but there were trades of Captain Marvel. Mm-hmm. So I picked that up, and that had, had Thanos's first deal, and mm-hmm. uh, really into the Silver Surfer, which led into the Infinity Gauntlet, which was Marvel's, in my opinion, first awesome <laughs> kick-ass crossover. Well, and people forget how big Silver Surfer was back then too. I mean, he was a legit contender for like one of the top comic book guys. Well, and I mean, because Ron I mean, Lim hasn't done much since him, and mm-hmm. he, to me, Ron Lim's style only fits him. It, it, to me, nah, he, he had a good run on Captain America. I, I, oh, I, that's right, he did. He, that and he should have had a run on Fantastic Four. I think he would have been a great Fantastic Four artist. I think what happened is he tried to pick up the slack for the entire Image Exodus yeah. and just like burned himself <laughs> out, and he's never been right. able to recover from that. It seems like probably right. Yeah. But I mean, for a while there, he was like the guy who brought the Marvel got to draw everything. It was him and the Kuberts. Yeah. They had to carry the entire load of every, every, the entire universe, it seemed like. And Mark Bagley. Yeah. Yeah, him too. That guy fucking was working his ass off too. I and hope. Mark Bagley. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Me neither. So anyway, so you got into the cosmic stuff, part because of Thanos, because of Thanos Quest, because of the, the big surge in cosmic stories in the early 90s. And did you follow them throughout? Annihilation? No. Because that was like 15 years later, I think, is Annihilation. No, that was like 2005, right? I, I, I followed them. They, they would have occasional miniseries. Like, they had the Cosmic Powers miniseries. Pretty good. Uh, that was before Genesis turned into Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. There was like a six-issue one where they 
focused on a different Terex, cosmic character in each tyrant. story. It was the introduction of Tyrant, mm-hmm. uh, and, and Thanos was going up against him. I would pick up any book that had Thanos in it. Mm-hmm. Um, Silver Surfer, at that point, pretty much died. Uh, Ron Lim wasn't in it anymore. It wasn't the run that I, that I... He left with 75, I think, right? Then they kill off Frankie Ray, and then he kind of left at that point or something like that. Anyway, Silver Surfer right, book, right is, the book there, died, right you know. There, yeah. yeah, that was where Morg, Galactus got Morg and yeah. uh, Harold. After that was all over, man, that book pretty much petered out, so... Didn't they, tr- didn't they try and reboot it with, like, Ron Garney? Wasn't Ron Garney drawing it? Garney did it for a little while Cat. with James DeMatteis. Yeah, and uh, they had... Who's that other guy they had? They had uh, um, Grinberg doing it for a little bit, too. But it just... It wasn't the same. Without Ron Lim and without the Infinity stuff coming out every yeah. year, it just... It, it, there was a time where Silver Surfer seemed like he was really at the center of all the, the cosmic stuff going on in the Marvel Universe. And it seemed like it, everybody kind of burnt out on it or, or they just lost the thread of what they were trying to do with all that. Uh, obviously, trying to do an Infinity a, a Maxi event every year killed not only the creators but the readers I think as well and so for a long time there just like the entire Marvel cosmic sphere was fallow well all that shit was taking a backseat to the X-Men anyway the whole time well I mean everything took a backseat to the X-Men that's what I'm saying always. so it was it was it got even older quicker because it was like oh this is what the non-X-Men books do all the time mm. it's just infinity shit mm. non-stop and that's basically what it was it didn't help that I think Heroes Reborn had a major impact on books like Silver Server 2 because that's where Marvel really started to focus on their icons again because basically from then on Marvel always tried tried to make sure they kept up with their big iconic heroes and, and that's what ended up becoming their movie universe as well. So that yeah, served quit, them well. I quit reading when they did all that shit. Yeah. Cool. So, but back in Annihilation, so how did you get to Annihilation? You were, was, st- you were still in your shop at, when I that... I think I was working at the comic shop. It wasn't heavily promoted like now. Uh, I mean, I'm sure that it was promoted somewhat, but... It felt I re- like a I sleeper. remember there weren't a lot of readers that picked it up. And Well, I mean, you can tell by the names working on those books. It wasn't a, a, a top-tier crossover event. It was like an experimental baby event it seemed like. Like, let's see if we can make this happen, this little side thing off, you know. Which is, I think, part of what made it nice is because it was so well-centered. You had the, the handful of miniseries that built up the characters that were going to be starring in it, then you had the event, and then it was done with. And that's part of what was so nice about it. It was very concise. Everything that was in the book, you maybe could have truncated some of the miniseries, you maybe could have just all, turned those into specials. All of them. Yeah. They were mostly all fucking terrible. Oh, come on, you're too hard on them. But, um, yeah. But they had to introduce those characters, though. You had People didn't know who the hell Super Scroll was anymore at that point you wouldn't know who the fuck Ronan the Accuser was if you grew up on 90s shit unless you're this guy over here reading the Cosmos I, stuff. I enjoyed them all yeah I did too so I, I, oh no they're fucking terrible they're uh, awful <laughs> oh. it was what it was it was Nova it was the prologue Nova and the actual Annihilation book those were the good ones what caught me was was Nova was was the Nova when Nova was just, really good they wiped out the whole core yeah right off the bat and, and you get into a big cosmic war and that was just something maybe I was looking for at the time or, or something I like to watch mm-hmm. is, is like that's why I like aliens better than alien, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just that, that you have a greater it sense of stakes. Like a cosmic, like a cosmic story should be big. You know? Yeah, well, it, like it, the Kree Skrull War and in, in, in points, mm-hmm. and, and this just was. And and not only it was just it was so neat to me that when Annihilus came over with all his his bugs and shit and whatnot, it wasn't just bugs and shit and whatnot. It was they had their own heroes from that negative verse, and mm-hmm. you know it was just man that was to me it was cool. And you well, had, it, it you had cool. a bunch of enemies. Yeah. He's like banding together. Mm. It, it was cool because again, it was basically Starship Troopers versus these these side <laughs> cosmic was, characters yeah. who nobody really thought anything about, and so you had a free reign to just go nuts with it. Because yeah, if you want to fucking kill Super Scroll, go for it. I halfway wish they had and it kind of stuck with that because that was a cool ending to that mini series. But uh, yeah, you could actually go someplace with those characters, and you felt had a real sense of stake because you didn't know if any of these fuckers were going to survive this stuff because they were isolated. It wasn't part of the main Marvel universe. Pete characters did die and did stay dead, and they did that for the, the success of Annihilation mini series too the, you know, the, the letter events because like which one did you like better the original Annihilation or the follow up I liked the original mm-hmm. I didn't like the second one at first I had to read it two or three times and it was one It's to me it's one of those things that I didn't like at first but now I really like mm-hmm. um, to me Ultron had always been uh, just a Earth villain so you know right away I was like kind of disenchanted with it um, but now looking into it is a neat idea because I didn't fucking exp- I should have looked at it like dude I didn't see this coming in a million years yeah. you know uh, I don't know it's cool but some of my favorite stories are, are, are stories like that. Um, me and Fix read Rebels. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have all the traits. Me too. And that yeah. was a very similar... 
Did you, you know, read the made... original Tom Pyre one though from the nineties? It's really it's better than any of the later ones. I like the later stuff that they did where they basically try to do Guardians of the Galaxy at DC, get all their cause their old uh, sci fi characters together on one team. And I kept waiting for that book to happen, and it never seemed to quite click. You know, they they get close to finally making it work, do, doing like what they do with the Guardians, and it just never quite happened. Where the previous Rebels series was an extension of the Legion book that had preceded it, L E G I O N. Yeah, and it took such a dark turn from moving from Legion to Rebels and the Rebels itself was such a cool dark fucked up book the art wasn't always great but it had a really cool story and because it got cancelled you know within a little over a year you had a nice finite story and, and it came to a, a, a solid resolution so yeah I, I vastly prefer the Rebels book from the 90s over the, the reboot I I just wanted that book to happen and never quite got there it just it gets so close you got Captain Comet and Starfire and Adam Strange and Vril Docks and all these cool characters and they just never seemed to actually do anything you know Despero's on the team and it's like yeah he's kind of around they never collected that huh? N- uh, no 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 the original it, Rebels any of it no because the no. Rebels we read is the recent one I don't, I don't think they even collected the Legion stuff which I liked I liked the recent Rebel. I mean they turned Starro into yeah and Starro the, the uh, Death Dealer was a pretty solid yeah, idea dude, that, uh, it was just it was neat to me it, it reminded me of the the couple uh, the Bloodlines the DC Bloodlines mm-hmm. the first couple books uh, one was Legion and one was Lobo mm-hmm. and they had that Aliens vibe. Lo- Lobo started yeah, it, up. and and Bad Legion was, I think, the book that led into the, the finale. Because they introduced okay. Pax, and Pax was the guy who kind of helped to gather everybody together in the space stuff to come to Earth to help deal with the Bloodlines aliens. Yeah, I would have rather <laughs> stayed in space. <laughs> it's bizarre. Like, it's like, wow, somebody else actually gives a shit about Bloodlines, so... <laughs> I liked it. Well, I, you know, I've got a podcast for Bloodlines. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm a fan. So, Oh, and by the way. Spill the, the blood. <laughs> and uh, don't, uh, uh, they're actually bringing Terror Smith back in Justice League of America. And they, they've got Glantz decapitated head in one of the preview pages from the book that hadn't come out yet. But uh, I'm looking forward to checking the out. The fat alien Glantz. The Glantz, yeah. Glantz was like my favorite. Glantz don't even the get coolest. me started on Glantz. <laughs> I know, man. So they show, like, Terror Smith, I guess, has like been keeping a little uh, uh, library of, of Bloodlines alien artifacts and shit and he's about to go fight the Justice League so I'm curious to see what they're going to do with that huh. but I love it when they mine that old 90s shit yeah Argus Ballistic Cardinal Sin Channel Man Chimera Edge Freight Train Geist Gunfire Akra Harry Force Hitman Hook Jam Joe Public Gloria Crab Layla Lionheart Loose Cannon Megabiter Mongoloid Miriam Nightblade Output Pass Prism Razor Shark, Rodney Jane, Rod Samaritan, Shadow Strike, Slick Shot, Smart Shot, Terror Smith. Wow, that's a lot of radical trademark names. And you may not have heard of any of them, but they were all introduced in DC Comics' 1993 Summer Annuals. Most went on to figure into more stories within their four color universe. Many earned their own spotlight series, and one became a cult hit from acclaimed creators. While the comics of the 1990s are often derided, for me, as a longtime comic book reader, I found a deepened fandom and a safe harbor from the Chromium Age in the DCU. I fell in love with the history and legacy found in generations of heroic mantles. And my journey into this continuity largely began with Bloodlines. Join me, Diablo Frank, as I explore the more overlooked areas of DC Comics' superheroes, beginning with an early 90s intellectual property generating stunt and fanning outward towards other obscurities and icons from throughout decades of sequential art stories all flowing through the DC Bloodlines. Podcasts available on iTunes, Shout Engine, and the Internet Archive. Just as First Dawn wrote of episode 69, The Sting of the Black Widow. Rollspine now it has me thinking of the Alice Cooper song of the same name in a new episode. Check it out. Kyle Benning wrote of that episode, Good call on having a hero deal with CTE. That's a brilliant idea. I suffer from it myself, and man, that shit cuts you down. Now I feel bad about talking so much shit about Iowa. Sorry, dude. I actually have nothing against Iowa. I just have nothing for it either. Count Junkula wrote, in quotation marks, written by an old white man. Actually, a young white man who is old now. Right, because of time. I <laughs> Look, I like that one. I forgot that we were reading a comic book that took place a long time ago, and the, they're old now, and they weren't old then. Leave me alone. <laughs> we're reading back issues. Leave me alone. Because of time. Uh, Siskoid wrote, I'm all for a Black Widow movie, as I find it ridiculous that some studio heads believe women can't head successful action franchises. That shit's getting disproved this week as a recording. Wonder Woman, yay! Where have they been for the last 30 years? You're telling me you can't sell a ScarJo movie jumping 
jumping off the popular Avengers movie? Well, they couldn't with fucking Ghost in the Shell. Come on now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've been looking forward to this. been saving this for a while. I bothered to find out what the iTunes reviews are, and Max going to read those now because my eyes are tired. All right, everybody. These are our reviews from iTunes. Our first review is four stars by Pretty Sweet by Cookie Bomb from New Zealand. That's five stars, home, isn't it? No, it's four stars. Four stars. Uh, eh, we'll call it five. <laughs> hey, great podcast, guys. Nice to hear the origins of What did you say? Is it Pretty Sweet by Cookie Bomb New Zealand? Yes, I did say Pretty Sweet by Cookie Sorry, Bomb from New Zealand. Still really hey, my mistake. Hey, great podcast, guys. Nice to hear origins of Marvel superheroes. Can you do one on Squirrel Girl? Yeah, okay. We need to do that. We need, right. I like Squirrel. I, I just love the concept of a Squirrel Girl, and I love squirrels. Our next comment is five. It's five star rating. A Marvel superhero podcast have arrived by Mandalorian Man- Metal. Mandalorian Metal. I'm sure some Star Wars reference or something. Great show delving into the past and present of the 616. Three gentlemen, three different types of appreciation for the universe. Fixit has a lock on the cosmic slash modern era with a laid back way of dropping facts. Uh, Frank, right now he's really laid back. <laughs> snoring behind me. Frank knows enough to make you believe or just well spoken uh, and very straightforward. Max seems to be like the casual fan and embraces this fact. Crazy? Maybe. Listen to be the judge. These have mentioned being friends for quite some time and play well off one another. I look forward to the cast week in and week out. I'm sure all have a perfect face for radio. <laughs> I think we're pretty decent looking dudes. Oh, we're smoking hot. Um, our ne- next comment is a five star review. Engaging Marvel Comics podcast by the Irredeemable Shag. If you love Marvel Comics, especially old school stories, then this podcast is for you. The hosts have a real passion and respect for the classic Marvel stories and characters. I wouldn't say respect is probably the, and probably not passion either. Uh, but don't pull away punches. Uh, but don't, but don't pull, pull any, any punches, punches when a story fails. When a story fails. Always entertaining with some not safe for worse work language. These guys know how to engage sometimes infuriate their audience diablo frank drops the knowledge the machine antagonizes and mr fix it brings a cool highly recommended subscribe today our next comment final is, comment from what our I final comment is five stars good podcast with a great bunch of guys by what time burglar time, one time burglar one informative well-placed and well-devised podcast generally funny and factual without being over the top with jokes uh just about the right length and not too long-winded like a lot of podcasts in this genre listeners don't really need need to have an extensive knowledge of the marvel comic book uh or movie universe as things are explained at a good pace and factually always spot on most of the time spot on well we try to cop to it when we fuck up right me especially because people like think i'm right all the time it's like no sometimes i really fuck stuff up so that's just like to it that's just itunes we've read our other ones right because we had the swag flu and all that other junk yeah i think we're i think we're not up to date because i checked this months ago months ago but uh as far as i know as of right now we're as up to date as i can pull it off hey people leave more of those also leave them five star ratings also we don't really care but go ahead and do it if you're on itunes do it If you're on iTunes, did I ever it. put out the episode where we were like begging for iTunes stuff? There, they, it was definitely a pride swallowing moment there, just among other things, possibly it. being swallowed. Just go do it, but also don't do it. But do it, <laughs> but do it. No, we don't really care. But do it, yeah. Right, but I'm just saying. I'm saying don't, don't not do it. But if you're on iTunes and you're going to review this podcast, click over to our podcast, review our podcast. But also, we don't care. <laughs> I mean, whatever. It's whatever you want to do, but also do it. <laughs> or else. Or, yeah, please do it. Or we're going to call Maybe we'd out. put out more episodes of the Marvel Superhero Podcast and we had all these, like, five-star reviews all the yeah, fucking yeah. time. I mean, we just, feel, like, compelled to do it. Yeah, Instead, like, we're going to do, like, fucking spawnometer because we're like, we don't give a shit because, you know, no, no, yeah, like, we don't care. Th- we, we need, we need, we need some detention down there. Yeah, we don't care, but also leave a five-star review. Cup the balls while you're. <laughs> Damn it. You always do this shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Comments. <laughs> Our Facebook friends from the last episode include Ali Batts, DeBeche, Derek William Crabb, Grant Richter, Joe Crawford, Keith G. Baker, and Ruth Sutherland. This episode's retweet frantic ones include Dr. Ange, Between the Pages, Comic Reflections, Ed Moore Jr. at Miskatonic, Inigo Montoya, Siskoid, Talk Nerdy to Me, Witchblade, and Yo Art App. Keepers of the Favorites Flame include 20th Century Geek, A Beardo Talks Film, Alexander, Alphabet Flight Pod, Backseat Directors, Bad at Shapirak, Buddy Wuddy, Cash Flag, Chris, Columbus Comic Corner, Comic Book Vault, Cured Podcast, David Golding, Dimitri Piminov, Dwight L. McPherson, Funny Comics, Good Times Great Movies, Gord Tolton, Grant Sawyer, Infinite Monkey Comics, James Hudson, John D. Knoll, Justice's First Dawn, Lava Hog, Madam Doom and the Glooms, Parlopod Comics Talk, Podcast Radio, Ryan D. Hulsman, Sakura Fields, Sean Merrick, Steve Sellers, Terrence Castingway, Tony Siponi, WhenItWasCool.com, who called our last episode cool, and Willie Yarbrough. <laughs>
And finally, the Merry Marvel Marching Society, 100 issues, the 108th Sage, Andy at Pop Box Culture, Avatar of the Green, Brody's Kitchen Podcast, Bronze Age Babies, Careless Deviation, Chris Sheehan, The Cinnabud Podcast, Comics in the Golden Age, Darren and Ruth Sutherland, Dude Imaginative Podcast, Ed Moore and Indie Comics Fan, Marvel Bronze Age and Teal Productions, Edgar Souza, FKA Jason, Hollywood Already Did It Podcast, Ice in the Face, Jake and Tom Conquer Podcast, Jeffrey Brown, Joe Crawford, Just in Time Podcast, Keith G. Baker, Kevin Daji, Longbox Crusade, Mark James, co-host, writer, producer of Original Comedy Show and website Poop Culture, Namor Submariner Podcast, Pass the F and Popcorn Podcast, Rad Adventures Podcast Network, Randy Caldwell, Richard Field, Ryan Daly, Silver and Gold Podcast Network, Resurrections, a Warlock and Thanos Podcast, and Xenozoic Xenophiles. The Marvel Superheroes Podcast is in no way affiliated with or endorsed by Marvel Entertainment. All characters mentioned and audio clips employed are believed covered under fair use, with no infringement intended against their copyright holders. The views expressed in this podcast are assumed legitimate, truthful, and solely possessed by the speaker. The last unicorn. Okay, I don't remember the theme song. You don't remember the theme song? Oh, I told you, I don't think I ever actively watched it. Oh my god, dude. No, no. It's by America.